you know, I was about to start. Ch I was about to start the stream normally. I was about to start the stream normally. I was about to be like, "How are you guys doing? How's everyone doing? Glad you're all here." And right as I'm about to click over to the other scene, what do I see in chat? You are now breathing manually. No. <laughs> I'm cursed. You cursed me. I'm fucking breathing on my own now. I've been like fucking reawakened in a fucking way worse way. <laughs> it's like, no, you know, it, you know, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. You know what it could have been? You know what it could have been? Could have been you have lost the game. Could have been you have lost the game. And now you've all lost the game. What a great start to stream, guys. <laughs> you've all lost the game. We're all breathing manually. And you're only using one nostril right now. <laughs> today, how are we all doing? How are we all doing today? I haven't watched any of the DOAI series, but I've been suggested to watch the new one, volume one. I've been suggested to watch volume one. So we're watching the whole thing. <laughs> we're watching the whole thing. I'm pretty, I never knew. I never knew I was British. I've been awakened. You're all aware. You're all hyper aware right now. We're going to get spooked. We're going to get spooked. For people who have watched the series, I'm assuming. I heard a noise. I'm assuming that this is where we start with Haunted Halloween PSA. Is this where we start? You can link them in chat. I can do that. Y'all are gonna watch it happen. Look, you're gonna see. You're gonna see behind the scenes. You're gonna watch. Oh yeah, new breaking announcement. We're less than two hundred people away. Less than two hundred people away from ten k. I have a big surprise. For when we get there. So if you haven't already, subscribe right now. Subscribe <laughs> right now is not. It's not. It's not a request. It's a task. <laughs> Where's the chat? Oh, there we go. How do I put things in chat? How do I do the thing? There's nothing here! The chat's meant to be here! Oh. This is the horror. This is the horror ever. Here we go. Ew, it's my voice. Get out of here. There we go. Inception. Boom. I fucking... YouTube's like, hey, we're gonna hide the little pin button under this, like, stupid little fucking emote button. Get out of my way! Here we go, pin. We're pinned. We've pinned the message. That is a link to the playlist. That's the whole playlist right there. Get out of here! Eternal loop check section. But yeah, I'm assuming we start at Haunted Halloween PSA, right? Because the first one's just a teaser. Also, am I too loud? Am I too quiet? How is everything? Everything sound good? Yes? Okay, let's go. Let me know if it's too loud, too quiet, if I should turn shit up. You stumbled across a strange box of tapes in the attic. <laughs> max the volume on your mic. It is on max. I think they might be haunted. If you think something's haunted, you wouldn't fucking watch it. You ever seen The Ring? I won't be putting that shit in. Of Eastridge County. Oh, thank God I don't have to read. News of a supposed break in that happened in the early hours of the morning. The break 
break-in occurred at the local Halloween retail store, Grimzo's, with the culprit of this break-in... No, no, Grimzo's! ...and one thing only. Yeah, so I got the door in the corner, and I reinforced the doors, slashed... The oh, wait, let me turn... Let me put captions on. Obviously, I checked inside. And Why is that the captions so tiny? Pretty smashed up, pretty good. Uh, bloody's still there, though, so I guess that's good. Uh, the only thing that seemed to be missing was the costume, the wall. There we go. Take just the costume. This bizarre set of events has left many residents baffled as to what the intentions behind this strange robbery were. Videos so to quiet, I can turn up. ...could be collected to reveal the identity of the culprit, leading many to speculate who this mysterious... Oh, isn't that a fucking really buzz? Is. Were they under the influence? A young teenager desperate to have a costume for an upcoming party? Did this robbery even happen? As of right now, it's anyone's guess. <laughs> Did it even happen? What oh, a great yes, question. This whole story is just a bunch of malarkey. Some kids break in some Halloween shop for a costume. Yeah, no. Not even stealing any money. If kids break in there, they're stealing at least some money. It's just another trumped up story for a small newspaper in an uneventful town when the newspaper company is probably running broke in a few months. Uh, I wouldn't trust a single bit of it. Pretty much nothing from that newspaper can be- It's still too anyway. quiet, oh my god. Oh. To think, they said our small town representative was corrupt. Now- Whether you believe this ridiculous story or not, one thing is certain. Do not trust anyone you see wearing this costume on Halloween night. Eastridge County has been left in a state of panic and disarray this Halloween night after the disappearances of six young children in the area. Uh. The disappearances began at 6 o'clock sharp, with reports telling me that they continued through the night until finally coming to a stop exactly one hour later. It, it all just happened so fast, you know? One minute, we're having a regular Halloween night, everyone's trick-or-treating like normal, and next thing you know, here comes a mother around the corner who's looking for her kid. So we're all trying to help her out, you know, we're looking up and down the streets for where this kid went, we don't think anything of it. And then, another mother comes over, and she has the same problem, and, and then another, and another, and next thing you know, everyone starts to panic, the police Super are speed kidnapper. Involved. Nobody knows what's going on, nobody knows where these kids went, and nobody knows who did it. The names of the missing children are as follows. Jason McDonald. John Thompson. <laughs> Ashley Wright. William Lewis. Norman Harris. And Sam Wilson. Did I say Police something doesn't look right with these kids? The <laughs> ...searching for both these children, as well as the culprit behind this heinous crime. While no one in the local area has been suspected yet, an eyewitness report described the culprit as wearing an orange striped costume with horns. A oh my goodness, it's him! It's the guy! Mask depicting bright yellow eyes and teeth. It's advised that all residents of Eastridge County avoid anyone seen outside who fits his description. As well as this, an officer on duty tonight had this to say regarding the matter. It breaks. My officer Kruger, does he have relations to Freddy Kruger? Just come over our town tonight. I promise, not only as an officer on duty. But as a father myself, that these children will be found, and the culprit behind these horrible kidnappings will be brought to justice. As police continue to investigate, several mandates have been put forward in order to ensure the safety of Eastridge County residents. It is requested that all residents stay indoors, keep all doors and windows locked, and it is heavily advised to not trust anyone you see wearing this costume. I won't trust anyone wearing a fucking costume, dude. <laughs> On Halloween, you trust no one. You gotta you have your, like, spooky, like, ghost flashlight, you know, like, the little, like, flashlights with, like, the ghost symbol on them. You fucking whack them over the head. Anyone comes and talks to you, whack them over the head. Run. Oh, security camera footage. Oh, joys. <laughs> Just no one, not even yourself. Motion. 
It's a poltergeist. Oh, ew. <laughs> I hate realistic Clyde. I hate these noises. That is some fucking amazing sound design. Holy shit. Multiple years of extensive mental and physical therapy, Officer Kruger, a surviving victim of the demon, was finally able to inform detectives. Look at some little spaceman. That transpired on the night he came face to face with this dangerous creature. With the information he provided, we now have a better understanding of the capabilities of this threat and how our personnel can combat it. Firstly, the silly appears to be capable of causing both visual and auditory hallucinations to those that are within close proximity to it. This makes it incredibly difficult to locate and contain the creature. As a precaution against this, all ECPD personnel must operate alongside a fellow officer at all times. If you are alone at any point, attempt to locate your nearest fellow officer as quickly as possible. Do not let the demon fool you. Grab a hold of the nearest objects you can to discern your surroundings. If you see- He fucking runs up to you and starts shaking your shoulders, goes fucking nightmare, nightmare, nightmare! If you have located a fellow officer, vacate the area until the terror. Of these hallucinations begin to fade away. Secondly, physical contact with a demon is incredibly dangerous. Following his encounter with this creature, Officer Kruger had developed severe no, no, Kruger. abnormalities which are still being treated to this day. The most significant of these abnormalities Don't show me them. is the discoloration of the sun. Oh, ew. Stop showing me now! It is imperative that all ECP Dude, I hate the fucking noises in my ears. Of distance from the demon at all times. Do not attempt to approach it unless it is absolutely necessary or it has been turned. British team, no! They're not that bad. <laughs> made, approach a fellow officer as soon as possible and seek help. Did you get touched by one of those things? You go to someone, they're going to put you down. That all ECPD personnel remember that the Eastridge demon is incredible. They're not going. They're going to put you down. Is being hunted. It will attempt to mislead you and will look for moments where you are most vulnerable. This creature should be treated as if it were human. Do not let it use its tricks against you. Do not let it touch you. Do not attempt to communicate with it. And above all else, do not trust anyone you encounter wearing this costume. Vasily. Oh, I can see that reflection. I see that reflection in the screen. Did I just get sent to like fucking um Nico's next ball? What's it called? The fucking jungler. Oh, funky tunes. As Halloween night begins to set it, Love all this funky tune. Of Eastridge County should be reminded that the smiling snatcher is out tonight. This monster is very real and threatens the safety of all Eastridge County residents. Dude, what is it but with America worry, naming? So <laughs> it's like anything over there, they name like serial killers, like funky tunes. Rule number They're like, one, 
Remember this so wump, so waggler. No be outside past six PM. Over here we have fucking that Jack the, the Ripper. Comes out to play. Rule number two. Keep all doors and windows in your house locked. That way the smiling snatcher cannot come inside. Rule number three. You do not hear the knocking at your doors or windows. <laughs> I'm never cry, I'm just know what your name would be. Rule number Ew. four. Yeah, I was gonna say bring them. You do not Sick bad. keep the music. Four. If you see or hear someone you know outside past curfew, that is not them. See, it's funny because the way that the knocking is, this is the only stand. direction in my room that doesn't have a window or door it is going straight finally, to the wall. The most important rule of all. Rule number five. Do not trust anyone you see wearing this costume. I hate the silence. <laughs> I hate the fucking silence. <laughs> I want the silence back. What is that? Yeah, ready? The first one? Dude, for a first episode- wait, let me turn it down a bit. For a first fucking episode? That is really fucking good. The sound design was like on point. Nothing felt like too fucking cheesy. I like that a lot, I like that one. Just a nice little like starting episode. Is he the funky guy? <laughs> Do not put in chat and that's the story of how I met your father. So yes, I'm going to let the credits roll out every time. These people need to be credited for their amazing fucking work. Didn't hear the knocking? What knocking? I didn't hear shit. I think somebody said look out your window. I can. And even if I do, it's still fucking daylight out. I can still see blue in the sky. Like, my room may be dark, but that's just because I had the fucking curtains closed. I got blackout blinds. I love the word malarkey. Yeah. No. Malarkey seems like such a funky word. Can you turn my fucking captions off again? Cut, cut, come on. Do you think anyone's gonna believe this? We're trying to make a news story here, man. Come on. What do you mean we're running out of time? Fine, uh... We'll use one of the older cuts. They're rigging it up. It's in your walls. Same thing with hooligan and bamboozled, yeah. Full of such funky little words. No, Mr. Kruger! No! He's dead! A feeling of sorrow has hung over Eastridge County this Halloween night after the unfortunate passing of the late Kenneth Kruger. Kruger was a dedicated and passionate officer who always put the people of Eastridge County before himself. He was not only a respected officer, 
but also a beloved member of our community and a caring father. Kruger's passing occurred late into the night, with officers discovering his body after they had received reports of his son, Klaus, being heard screaming. It is I, Magloob McFlorper. After arriving at the scene of the crime, they found his body hanging inside his son's closet. As well as and his body, yeah. officers on the scene found this note left. I was like the word bed. phenomena. What a totally like legible note. The disappearance I can't read anyway. that occurred last year affected Kruger more than any other officer on the case. He was very close. To He's not feeling it, Mr. Krabs. Giving him a sense of responsibility for solving the case. This quickly led to rage, sorrow, and regret, which eventually became. Too Is that the fucking advanced. shy guy crying sound Nobody effect? Nobody was there to listen to Kruger in his time of need, but now we will make sure that his story is told. I don't mean shy guy like Mar. I mean shy guy like SCB-096. health issues? Don't hesitate to call this number and seek help. Oh, let me call that right now. Oh. <laughs> Put that back again. What the fuck was that? I just want to die. Why won't you let me die? Gregor, no! Because I still have use for you yet. Dude, that's exactly what it used to sound like when my fucking, um, German teacher would walk down the fucking hallway to the classroom. She had, like, these, like, massive high heels. <laughs> Who's out here wearing high heels? It's a short one. I know this one's this one was only a short one. They're keeping him alive. They're doing shit to him. They're doing <laughs> they're doing funky things to him. He bounced off of his damn high heels. Wait, that's Langman? I know Langman. I remember fucking Langman. We're authorized, guys. We're authorized. I swear. Authorized because I said so. <laughs> Mothman. Dude, I love Mothman. Gotta be one of my favorite cryptids. Mothman, where? Oh, a camcorder. Mmm. <laughs> mm. That's all right. I don't think I want to look. I don't, I don't think I want to see this. Put the book back down. <laughs> Leave it where it was. Oh, 1987! The bite of 87! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, it's snowy. I love the snow. Although I feel like I'm not going to after this. I still love, like, the, um, the characterization of, like, the whole series. Having, like, the theme of, like, everything is fucking orange as hell. <laughs> yeah we never get any fucking snow it's like we don't get snow in like December like September to December in the UK we get it in like February <laughs> which is good for me because that's when my fucking birthday is but like 
It's never there for like December or Christmas or anything. We get like sludge. Somebody peed on all of the snow. God damn, how big's our bladder? Run. <laughs> Run simpler. Your son is dead! Get out of there! I'm right here, Sammy. You're gonna have to help me though, honey. I can't find you. <laughs> Get out of there! <laughs> Oh, that face was freaky. If there's one thing that always gets me in these, it's the, like, creepy faces. Like, it's very common, but, like, fucking, they're so fucking freaky, okay? <laughs> they still scare the shit out of me. <laughs> he listened. He's smart. Not smart enough, though. <laughs> Should have practiced more. So we've seen orange snow, red snow, yellow snow. <laughs> Deep fried face jump scare. No! The horror. <laughs> the rats when they see the fucking KFC deep fryer. Put that hand away. Put that fucking hand away. The beacon. It's all pumpkin. Out of my ears! Yeah, because you're gonna be dead! You're gonna be dead! <laughs> you're not gonna be alone because there's gonna be no one to be alone! Oh, the blue. Of them fucking strobe lights. Dude, imagine some kind of fucking like horror antagonist, but they just have a fucking strobe light eyes. Like instead of like red eyes, they just start going fucking RGB. Hey, I I <laughs> um, guys, I think we're gonna have to see this. <laughs> Not fucking. I think you're gonna want to see this. <laughs> I hate, like, combined with, like, creepy faces, not being able to see a face at all. That's, like, a like really good fucking combination. Like, creepy face and then no face. Blech. Horrid. That one was good. That one was nice. Nice and simple. I do like it when series have like big, like really high production, like long videos in the series, but also at the same time they have small little bits that just like add more into like the lore. Or, like just a little bit to add to the story. Guys, it's time! It's the new one! Let me put fucking captions on for this one. This is the new one! This one is the longest one, too. Whole fucking 24 minutes. My name is Alex William. My name I is Walter Hartwell White. Elk Crescent, Eastridge County. And up until this point, I've worked for the Lankman Foundation. A job which I have quickly come to regret. This is my story. 
<laughs> My name is Walter Hartwell White. I began my work for the foundation. Oh, I am the one who records. <laughs> After what happened on Halloween, I was put under 24 seven witness protection. They told me that the information- oh, We've changed I from orange during green now. It felt like I was under constant house arrest. There wasn't a day that they weren't watching me and it went on like that for years. They gave me my job at the foundation as a form of protection. A bunch of guys in suits showed up to my house and told me that it would be for the better if I took a job at their new facility. Uh, I didn't know much about them at the time. Nobody did, really. All they told me was that they were helping Veldigan victims, but even that felt vague. Dude, somebody comes to your door in a suit and asks you to come to a facility you're about to get fucking shot. Oh my god, I love this jam! It's got the fucking funky tunes. <laughs> he touched grass and became green. Hello. You don't know me. It's the guy! I certainly know you. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Lankman. Or at least a cartoon version of the man himself. This is like the DNA man from I Jurassic Park. House animator Mortimer Gray. Who you may know for his work on the classic cartoon series Candy Mouse. I come to you all today to announce the founding of the Lankman Foundation. <laughs> He's high on the helium. Gateway into the future of Eastridge County. Four years ago, our lovely town was plagued by a species of creature we have come to know as the Veldigan. These dangerous creatures the guy, the guy. continue to threaten our residents, with there being seemingly no end to the dangers they pose. Until now, our Beaver B Square and Man wasn't there. Herbert Lankman <laughs> created our foundation for the purpose of both containing this anomalous threat. You have a very noticeable well ear. All those who have been affected by them. How does he plan to do this, you ask? Well, the answer is quite simple. Using the inheritance left behind by his father, Herbert Lankman got to work renovating and reopening the old Lankman's asylum, repurposing it into asylum. a massive treatment center for mm -hmm. all those who have fallen I don't do well with those. to the Veldigan. As well as this, he has been hard at work donating generous amounts to Eastridge County's police force, ensuring they can continue to do what they do best, protecting all of you. Here at the Lankman Foundation, we know these last couple of years have been scary, but don't worry. Soon enough, this will all be a thing of the past. Lankman's gonna put me in the rubber room of the rats. If you may know have any questions regarding the foundation and what we do, do not hesitate to give us a call. You call that number, you get put in the rubber room of the rats. Oh, ew, get out of my ears. <laughs> I hate that. Oh, I hate that fucking noise. <laughs> rats? I was rats once. Nine one one. Where is your emergency? This is forty five Elk Crescent. Send the police. Send the police, please. Can you describe the situation to me, ma'am? There, there's a group of men. There's a group of men trying to try to break into my house. They're slamming on the door. Please send the police now. The police will be on their way in a moment, ma'am. I just need you to breathe. Did you get a good look at these men? What did they look like? I... I don't know what they look like! They all... They're all wearing masks! I can't see their faces! They look all the same! What kind of masks, ma'am? Yellow... Yellow ones? They're What's wearing yellow masks. Now? They look like bandages? Ooh. Slenderman. <laughs> Hello? 
That's some really nice fucking voice acting. That sounds like actual fucking panic. <laughs> Ma'am, I need you to start doing some manual breathing. Ew! Oh, that is horrible. After oh, but it's a horrible fucking noise. They immediately bombarded me and everyone else with all these different mandates and training tape. Even for the most simple of jobs, there were rules for everything, and half the time they didn't even make sense. Perhaps the strangest mandate they had us commit to, though, was to wear these goggles at all times. They said it was a preventative measure to avoid the effects of some kind of The sound design in this is so fucking amazing. None of us knew what that was or how it was even possible. All they told us was that it would make you see- Like it's one of those like designs where like it sounds like it's getting in my fucking ear. In line. Like it sounds like a little fucking earwig going into my ear. We never really knew for sure if it was working, but all the patients seemed to suffer from similar symptoms that were said to be a part of it. They were always scared of us, no matter how much we tried to help them. And they always complained about hearing some kind of horrible music somewhere in the facility. What got to me the most about it, though, was how normal everyone treated it. Something beyond our understanding was being used on these people, and nobody seemed bothered by it but me. It's like a they mix of either disgusting like earwig happened. noise or, like, funky tunes. Here it's like the entire asylum, soundtrack so far. It's imperative for all staff members to be aware of our state-of-the-art hallucinatory environment. Oh, more fucking funky tunes. We were able to keep all patients within our walls and I fucking like this track. As well as treat their conditions through exposure that no other location can provide. The amount of benefits this new technology can provide for the patients of our asylum is numerous. But you must remember that there are multiple precautions which have been put in place to ensure that you, our staff, do not suffer from the effects of our hallucinatory environment and can do your job correctly and safely. The first of these precautions should have been provided to you on your first day at the Who the fuck just spoke in my ear? <laughs> Get out! Specialized optical Did I have those fucking goggles By next to me like right lenses, now? Same lenses and everything. Will be able to see past the environment's effects, I fucking recognize those no bumps anywhere. And a job well done. <laughs> like three if pairs of goggles. These lenses are to be removed. Staff members will experience severe hallucinations which will make your work extremely Stop difficult. speaking in my ear. The second of these precautions I hate comes it. in the form of knowing what you should and should not be hearing when on the job. This. Yet to develop a I should be hearing someone speaking in my ear. Symptoms of them appear to follow a similar and predictable pattern. If you believe yourself to be hallucinating, ask yourself if you're hearing the voices of people that do not exist, distant music coming from an unknown location, Dr. Lankman requesting your aid, did I fucking love this track? Do not exist. If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then you are hallucinating and should treat those sounds as if they do not exist. <laughs> Moving on from our patent. If you're hallucinating, just ignore it. It'll go away we eventually. We discuss the role of another very important part of our facility. It's imperative that all staff members avoid any Stop bringing that fucking noise back. <laughs> were possibly the most disturbing part about working in that entire Dude, if the facility, soundtrack for this fucking episode comes out, I'm adding like half of the fucking tracks in here onto my playlist. Black from top to bottom. I don't even think I ever saw them outside of their uniform. We were always expressly told never to interact with them for any reason. Uh, apparently their job was just that important. It was with them that I reached my breaking point when working at that damn place. If you're hallucinating, hallucinate hard enough and it'll go away. Rooms, taking them to places that I never got to see. I always wondered what they were doing, but I made sure to mind my own business. That is until late one night when I was working at the facility. They had just brought in a new patient, a woman who looked to be in about her 30s. She had no diagnosis, no sign of serious mental illness, and physically she was fine. None of us knew what she was doing there, but like we always did, we just ignored it and minded our own business. That night, though, she starts a ruckus. I think every person in the facility heard it when she started screaming. Mm. I was the first one to arrive when I saw what was happening. Four of those caretakers dragging her out by her arms and legs while she's just kicking and screaming. I couldn't believe what I'd seen. I tried running in to stop them, but one of my co-workers stopped me, looked me in the eyes, and said, 
it isn't worth it. I was in disbelief. These caretakers were treating Veldigan victims like caged animals, and here we were just standing there and watching. That was when I knew I had to do something about it. I always had my suspicions about the asylum, but seeing how this treatment facility treated its patients, that was the final straw. I went to as many of my co like as I could to try and get as much information as possible about the Foundation and their shady practices. I wanted to bring these problems to the light, to have the general public know what was really going on in there. The pain course, is a hallucination, what ignore it. Do with me. They just brushed me off and told me that it wasn't worth it. Get to go, thanks for showing up. Trouble. But I ignored them and I kept trying. When I ran out of staff to talk to, eventually I turned to patients. More specifically, the woman I saw getting attacked that night. I wanted to know where they told She's gonna say some wild shit. So I snuck She's like, he's in the walls. He's in the water, she's she just. And I was able to record an entire interview I had with her, and I was just left with so many questions. It's like the SCP Foundation, she's like, I saw VO5. I, I promise I'll behave, I don't want to go back. Listen, I don't want to hurt you, I promise. In the red room. <laughs> I'm just here to ask you. They're in the red, they're in the red room. I'm sorry about what happened to you the other night. It was horrible. I want to try and make sure that doesn't happen again. And it would help a lot if you could answer my questions. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, so my first question, why were you brought here? You didn't have any diagnosis and you don't seem to suffer from any symptoms of Veldigan sickness. I, I don't know why I'm here. These men broke in my house. No, nobody came to help me. The doctor told me I'm sick, but I, I don't know what he means. I'm, I'm sorry if that doesn't help. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. It helps a lot. You're doing great. <laughs> red room of rats. Question. I hope there's no rats. That night when you were attacked here, I know it must be a lot, and I'm sorry to bring it up, but do you know where they took you? I don't know. He he told me I can't tell anybody. I'm blood sorry. for the blood he god. Me. He said he would take me back there. I I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Hey, 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 it's all right. It's all right. You're not going to go back there. I promise. I just need to know where it was. Nobody else will know. They. <laughs> Hi, Lyra. To room sixty-six. That took me to R. <laughs> no, that's not possible. There's only. The fucking soundtrack was amazing. It's him! He's going to take me back now! Please don't let him take me back! Don't let him take me back! Don't let him take me back! Dude, the voice acting is amazing in this. Holy shit. Just what do you think you're doing? Everything that happened was just a blur after that. Those caretakers came into the room and dragged her. That's a banger of a fucking voice for an antagonist. Holy it. shit. It was it was the last time I ever saw her. And then they just sent me back to work as if the whole thing never even happened. That is such a cool was voice. Odd, but it was what she said to me that stuck out to me the most. She told me that she was taken to a room 66, which didn't make any sense. The asylum was small, it was only built with 65 rooms in mind, so a 66th room shouldn't be possible. At first I thought maybe she was misremembering things, or she was just misspeaking. I mean, she was clearly stressed out, and the way she was taken there was violent, but that just didn't explain things for me. Like when the opposite of helium? The patients were being taken oh, what's the other one? It's like called the dihydrogen. I tried to look for answers. Langman like has two sides. Helium and dihydrogen. Nothing until I started to watch through our old conversation. Sinistar! That's why I like it. Dude, I fucking love Sinistar. I saw something off the corner of my eye. Something I had never seen until it was staring me right in the face. He does sound like Sinistar. camera located right in the corner of that room. The asylum didn't have cameras, at least not in the rooms of its patients. If I had known they were watching me the entire time, I never would have staged that interview. And somehow I didn't see it. 
something wasn't adding up. I went back to the asylum after that. And the goggles are hiding things. Patients. No camera. I, I thought that I was losing my mind. I thought for a moment that maybe, maybe <laughs> I was just from seeing... nine free quarters. <laughs> but then, then I realized something. Maybe, maybe I was. Late one night when no one else was around, I tested something. Something I was afraid to. I removed those goggles they gave us. And when I opened my eyes, when I opened my eyes, everything looked the exact fucking same. Everything he said a bad word! After that. Who knows what they could have been hiding that we just couldn't see. Cameras, people, rooms. Suddenly, <laughs> room 66 was terrifyingly possible. <laughs> Flankman became happier and his name was Fankman. <laughs> I returned to the asylum later that night with a camcorder in hand. I figured Dude, I love this soundtrack, holy shit. The corners of the patient's rooms, then it could help me find I've said it about 20 before. times, but holy fuck. I walked up and down the halls of that entire asylum, trying to find anything out of place. <gasps> room! And eventually, I found it. Puppy reveal. In front of that door for what felt like an eternity. A part of me wanted to know what was in there so badly, but another part of me just didn't want to see it. I was terrified, but I felt like I didn't have a choice. It didn't even feel like I was in control of my own body as I pushed that door open. What is that melody? You munch and you crunch him? Munch and crunch? Oh my god. Help me. Oh my god! He crunching! It's the guy! He, he big, he big. He's a big boy, big puppy. Looks like someone wandered somewhere they aren't supposed to be. <laughs> In that moment, cornered and alone, I finally understood what they were so afraid of. I was finally seeing what they were seeing. For the first time, for the first time, for the first time, I saw his face. Oh my god! Uh... That's fucking cool as hell! He's hecking red! Oh my god! God! <laughs> it's not the puppy from Vivo. Oh my god, that's such a cool fucking visual. With the fucking overlaying and shit. It's the hat, man. I didn't know what to do. I panicked. I, I couldn't move. Oh and my god, did I have fucking goosebumps? That shit was so fucking cool. But then. Then he let me go. He just told me to go back to work and act like it didn't happen. He's like an angry manager. Get back to work! I was too scared to find out what would happen if- I'M NOT PAYING YOU TO SNOOP AROUND! So I just continued my work there as normal. I was never punished. Nobody ever found out. I was like, yeah, back to green. It was like the whole thing never happened. Until... Until recently. The reason I'm recording this tape tonight is because I fear soon you may never hear from me again. <laughs> They're gonna put him down. Blank man acted like that. They're actually gonna fucking shoot him. But ever since the recent incident, things have changed. He and the caretakers have become more aggressive. I've started seeing. <laughs> like it was just Benson. <laughs> passing me by with tinted windows. People following. Go me into up, room 66 now, or you're fired. Treating me like I don't even exist. Recently, 
It feels like they don't <laughs> want me talking anymore. Someone he turned red because he was a spy. Care about has been hurt. And it's like a fucking paper mask. Job that doesn't even fit my credentials. They've made me overqualified. Somebody, somebody very dangerous, and I have my suspicions that once I've told them everything they need to know, they won't need me anymore. That's why I'm recording this tape. I've learned things about this person, things that Lankman doesn't even know, things that could help me. After I'm done recording this tape, I'm going to be meeting with that person, and depending on how that goes, you may never hear from me again. If you're watching this, I've left you something, <laughs> something important. This is literally the fucking last Walter thing Wyatt. My was able to provide me with before they got to him, an archive. An archive of all the Foundation's most important Let's go! It contains everything. Every lie they've told, every secret they've kept, every recording I've made. If I don't come back from this, you need to spread that information. The people need to know. I don't want to go about this alone, but as things are, I've had no choice. It just... It just feels good. To finally get this off my chest. Somebody's gonna come around and snap his neck. <laughs> that fucking audio again! Get it out of my ears! <laughs> get it out! <laughs> I hate it! <laughs> Such a little fucking earwig in my ear. Should we act to Godzilla NES? I could do. Stop putting fucking manual breathing in chat, I swear to fucking god. But, oh my god, that was so fucking good. Holy shit. Like, I was getting fucking suggested to it, like, to fucking watch it by everyone, but oh my fucking god. It was a fucking masterpiece. Look at these amazing people. Look at them all. They all fucking worked so hard. And they'll be like, no! That was, dare I say, Sigma. <laughs> but dude, the fucking, like, the build-up to Lankman's face had me fucking goosebumps. Holy shit. That was amazing. The entire fucking series is so fucking good. Makes me sad I haven't fucking watched this earlier. <laughs> You're breathing because of theme of the stream. Now! There's the puppy. God. This is so fucking good. Emmanuel speak. I'm doing that anyway! I'm trying my best! Oh my god, that was so fucking good. Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> but oh my fucking god, the soundtrack, the visuals, the voice acting, the way everything was fucking set up. That was fucking amazing. <laughs> Manual walking, I'm in a chair. The only good analog horror, there's a couple of good analog horrors out there. There's a couple of fucking good ones out there. <laughs> Is that the NPC see Max Dragonborn? I haven't played fucking Skyrim in ages. The Lich. That's what fucking, um... What's his name? Winfrey? That's what Winfrey reminds me of. The fucking, like, ripped, like, bomb part where you can just, like, see his fucking, like, a leshy fucking jaw. It reminds me of the fucking Lich. The fucking, like, the curly horn, too. Okay, well, let me... How long have we been going for? Only an hour! That was barely a fucking stream! <laughs> Manual setting. Now I'm gonna get a fucking cramp! Okay, what can we fucking... Where's Godzilla NES? Let's fucking do that now. <laughs> it's empty in all fucking caps. 
<laughs> three hours? What? Oh my god. The whole thing three fucking hours? Let me have a look see in ye old watch party suggestions channel. <laughs> Manual watching. Do I have three hours of puke? You know what? Yeah, fuck it. If this is the whole thing. Like if this is everything, I can just put this on and we'll watch this. I'd be happy with that. Be a long ass fucking stream, but fuck it. Does it have to be horror related for the watch party? Presumably, yes. If it could be, I would prefer horror. Can you join? I can fucking wait. Where's. You totally could. So, oh my god, my fucking hair is getting in my face again. I say this all the fucking time. Somebody needs to make like a fucking grease gel so that I can fucking put my hair back. We had it going in my fucking eyes. Because when my hair is not greasy, it goes in my fucking eyes. You're like, do you want me to fucking call you on Discord? Or do you want me to hop in some other VC? Gonna be in a bit? I can fucking, I can start watching it then. I'll say manual hair? What the fuck do you mean manual hair? Have you tried hair nets? I don't wanna look like a fucking lunch lady. Dude, I. <laughs> dude, oh, dude, I remember. Back in. Back when I was in school, like primary school, high school, we had the nicest fucking lunch ladies ever. Like, I don't know what it is with like the, um, like American lunch lady stereotype that are like these mean old women. They're so fucking nice. Like, we used to, when we were on primary school, but, like, the same people that were the lunch ladies was all, would also be, like, the people making sure that we weren't, like, fucking killing each other on the playground. They were fucking nice as hell. They were just, like, they were, like, extra moms. It was, like, you'd go to primary school, you'd have extra moms there on the fucking playground. <laughs> Manual molecular structure. I fucking, like, dissolve where I am. <laughs> Turn the switch in my hair to manual mode. It starts, like, fucking, um... <laughs> like Medusa with the fucking snakes, so it's like fucking wiggling around. Yeah, the lunch ladies like they call you like they're like they're like oh honey, and they're like sugar, and you're like yeah, you're so nice. Like I think we had one. There was one who was kind of mean that we used to make fun of because her name was like Mrs. It was like Miss Fryer or some shit like that. And we always used to call her Miss Frying Pan. Like, I think her name was like, it was like Miss Fry something. It was like Fry, like Fry Ear or Fry E. <laughs> like some shit like that. We, we used to fucking make fun of a lot of people when I was in school. Like when I was in high school, because we have to wear uniforms, we had black blazers. Like just like regular like suit, like clip on tie and shit. But the school that was like nearby us had to wear these like really obnoxious green ones so instead of it being black on like the other blazer it would be like obnoxious like not like a good green it was like an icky green it was like a weird icky like if you were to turn navy blue and like make navy blue green like that's what it looks like and we'd make fun of him for it <laughs> go bald do used to be a fucking oh i'm fucking bringing in like a bunch of fucking school like <laughs> school stories here when i was in college but like for like the for like for the only months I was in college before I dropped out, uh, I used to walk home with this one girl who she always used to like um because I always used to complain about my hair, like even back then she'd be like oh just shave it off like you look good with shaved hair just shave it all off and I'm like I'm not gonna shave off my fucking hair I don't want to look like a tennis ball, although if I do ever have to fucking shave my hair I guarantee you I'm going to get it fucking colored to look like a tennis ball. Like, nobody can stop me. If I fucking shave my head, I'm going to make it look like a fucking tennis ball. It's gonna be perfect. I'm, I'm assuming this is the whole thing. I've never fucking watched Godzilla NES. Godzilla's something that, like, I'm starting to get into recently. Fucking pog as hell. Also, hi. 
Welcome to the stream, Lyra Horrors. I'm I'm glad you liked funny dreams of of a very sleepy person. Dude, a <laughs> very sleepy person. It was so fucking good, dude. It was so fucking good. <sighs> that soundtrack, man. I uh. Yeah, I wonder who did that. Ass off. I wonder who did that. I wonder. I wonder who did that. Here, let me. Do you have a fucking um? How do I set up reactive things? Uh, basically, what you do is you go into your Streamlabs mm. and you go to add it and you do browser source and then you just put in the link. Send me the link. Okay. Let me get it real quick. I've done this enough times that I actually remember what to do. That's <laughs> I've kind of never done this before. <sighs> An insomniac is the opposite of an AP person. Hey! You Listen, right? <laughs> yeah, you right. <laughs> Dreams of a tired motherfucker. <laughs> Dreams of a heavy sleeper. <laughs> Did I come the fucking uh, scene at the start? <laughs> My name is Walter Hardcore White. It's fucking, it's so like Walter. <laughs> it's so fucking Walter White. My name. Is Walter Hartwell White. My name is Walter 308 Walter. Negra Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico, H7104. <laughs> it is Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm trying to remember what the fucking location was. I can't believe you don't know it by heart. This is so. This is so. <laughs> I don't know anything by heart, me. I'm a horrible rememberer. I don't know why my Fuji tech is being weird. Hold on, I gotta refresh the page. Mm. And dreams of someone who barely dreams. <laughs> hey Wolfram, I absolve you of your sins. Soap blast. You mean soap blast? <laughs> yeah, I have to fucking um. My name is Walter. No, my name is Skylar White, yo. My husband is Walter White, yo. Uh huh. Stop selling marijuana to my husband. Because my friend keeps fucking let sending me different versions of it like all the time. My shit is being weird, but let me know if this works. I will send it. Whoop. Beep. It shows nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I figured. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Mm. That is very strange. Let me go into edit and see. Oh, that's why it says it says no file chosen. No oh, choice. What do you mean no file chosen? No files existent. Okay, this is this is getting weird. This is getting quirky. I <laughs> just see someone put dreams off and then like nothing else afterwards. <laughs> Mr. Reaction? Oh, you'll be able to watch the, the VOD. I'll be, I'll be in the VOD. I'll be there somewhere. <laughs> I think I saw a version where after every single line, it was some kind of fucking, like, bell chime. So it'd be like, My name is Walt- My name is Skylar White, yo. Ding. My husband is Walter White, yo. Ding. Uh-huh. Ding. <laughs> Yeah, the, the solution to this seems to be odd. Something about, like, clearing a cache in the browser source. Mm. Just put an image of my fuck ass there. I'll send it one to you. <laughs> I ain't doing all that. <laughs> hey, let me start fucking setting that up. In. Oh, yeah, and then uh, when you start listening to Godzilla NES, be sure to... um. Uh, share screen so that I can yeah, listen yeah. as well. 
my mouth will be perpetually open and staring at the screen. <laughs> I will be. You're pogging. I'm pogging. By the way, the version of Godzilla NES you're about to listen to is mm-hmm. like a 2012 narration. So it's like the guy sounds like, um, actually, <laughs> um, and like his mic quality is terrible. But honestly, I don't know about you, but I think that when creepypastas are narrated like that, it kind of adds to the to the 2012 like <laughs> nostalgia feeling. You are a fucking kaiju. <laughs> Oh my god, it, my dream has come true. Oh my god. Ah, my fucking mouse. I need to buy a new fucking mouse, I swear to god. They flip so you're um, facing the I right way. You literally stop sending me voice messages. You're not funny. Um, what the sigma? <laughs> um, what the sigma? What the fuck do I. F- that video, it haunts my dreams. <laughs> Can I flip the image over? Yeah, you, you just uh, right-click it, you get a transform, and then flip horizontal. Oh my god, you're so right. See, I know things, sometimes. <laughs> there we go. Boom. How? Boom, 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 as Dame Traps would say. Ah, oh, the nostalgia. Let me turn the this nostalgia. shit up. When I was a little kid, the two <laughs> 360 <laughs> microphone. <laughs> NES games. So naturally, okay, yeah, when is, Godzilla Monster isn't that Monsters awesome? came out, it was like no. a dream come true. Well, so realistic. <laughs> almost. To sum it up, most of the games revolved around getting through very repetitive outer space levels while smashing up tanks and jets and then fighting against Godzilla's monster enemies. Overall, it was pretty mediocre. <laughs> Kaiju Sigma then, jump scare. Care. When yeah. I got the game as a present for my 10th birthday, I played it night and day as much as I could. Unfortunately, I had traded the game for Amagon a year later, much to my regret when I found out what the game was like. Recently, I had bought a new NES system, and through a lot of hunting and asking around, my friend Billy finally managed to find a copy of Godzilla Monster of Monsters. Oh, just go to eBay. I was pumped to play my favorite childhood game. It never ever occurred he sounds to so me excited. To where Billy found it. I was so pumped to play my favorite childhood game. Like Legend of Zelda, Bomberman, and some stupid thing called Action 52. But Godzilla had come first. Action 52. Godzilla did what? So I started the game, and the nostalgia came flooding back like a tidal wave. Godzilla's oh, 8-bit theme song flooded proudly through the speakers, and I was oh, yeah, so it, grinning. I don't know how much you know about this, but like this Some entire story has games, like but I've never had much artwork made by the person, the person who written the story. Yes. Mm. Uh, to match Those like the aesthetic of the original game, so it's literally simpler, like recreating screen caps from a game that doesn't exist. Damn. But after what's happened with this game, I don't have those feelings anymore. So I see Mothra. I had forgotten how quick the fun of smashing <laughs> love Mothra. Godzilla wore off in the scrolling levels. The game bombards you with bullets and things crashing into you from every direction, and you're too big to avoid most of them. Although my last excitement had worn down some. It wasn't long at all before I got to my first boss battle. My first opponent was Gizora, an obscure squid kaiju who had never been in the Godzilla movie. I love Gizora. The most annoying thing this about fighting so cool. Gizora is that he always backs you into a corner and starts smashing you with his tentacle, and you're unable to move until he gets off. <laughs> this move doesn't do any damage, but it can stall you until the timer runs out and you have to start the fight over, and he regains some health. He sound like it's chills about the chill speech sounds. pattern. And of course, he did it when I fought him. Only for some it's reason, so good. this caused the game to glitch up. Because once he started smacking me, he never stopped. The timer was <laughs> supposed to end the fight in watch about your 20 toe. seconds. Watch your toe. But this lasted for nearly five minutes. I said watch our toe! After a while, the graphics started to mess up. Also, this is Gizora, by the way. All over the place. Hey, let me see. Which was weird because <laughs> I just took the game guy. out blew on it and then started again. 
I wasn't about to let a little glitch stand in my way, so I started again. This time, defeated Gizora and the level's other boss, Mogira, without any problems. So then, it was on to the next planet, Mars. I browsed around the board and found something unexpected. Where Varen's piece should have been, there was instead a piece representing Titanosaurus. There was only ten kaiju in the game, and Titanosaurus is not one of them. Or so I thought. Perhaps Titanosaurus and it's so funny because that the sprite just like blends in with the rest of them because that's how faithful the so art style is. Yeah. Not only was I playing my favorite game, it's the spirit but I was of playing a prototype of some sort of a new monster. Needless to say, I ran through the levels as fast as I could to see Titanosaurus in action. I fought Gizora again and beat him before he could do his tentacle smash. I love how the subtitles this just do not the spell the kaiju names right whatsoever. <laughs> Gizora's sprite didn't sink to the bottom, but instead seemed to be devoured by the glitch and his eyes started randomly spawning all over the screen. Oh, I boss. Only creepypasta to have accurate glitches. glitches. With Gizora was my yeah. first warning sign that something was very wrong with this game. But foolishly, I ignored it and proceeded on to fight Mogira. Who this foolishly, I ignored it. Foolishly. foolishly. Mogira was twice the size he should have been, which startled Big boy. Me. He was also considerably harder to beat than usual, which is to say, not at all. But soon as I had defeated him, and when he died, yet another glitch happened. It happened extremely fast, so I was lucky to get a screen cap of it at all. But what had happened was that the giant Mogira sprite started to shatter and melt. Also, if you looked at the garbled text at the right corner of the screen, you would notice what appeared to be a bird in a cage. I still had no idea what that meant. Brother, I think that's just a At visual point, glitch. I don't do shit, dude. Dinosaurs. And I was worried as to what kind of glitches would happen this time. But to my surprise, Titanosaurus looked just fine. Although all the game's bipedal monsters were at the same height, Titanosaurus was a bit taller. But since Titanosaurus actually was taller than Godzilla in his film debut, I thought this was kind of cool. After a very fun fight with the monster that wasn't supposed to be in the game, I took over the enemy base and proceeded not to Jupiter like normal, but instead to Pathos. No, not Jupiter, that's my favorite planet! Pathos was the same as Jupiter in layout, except the board was dark blue rather than green. The first thing I noticed was that all the usual level icons oh God, by a blue rock and some kind of orange honey. Let's go! Shape. There was one icon that had part of the jungle icon shape, but I didn't pay too much attention to it. I checked the other side of the board to see the new monster. Instead of Hedora, it was Biolanti. But that couldn't have been right. Crying because I missed Hedora. Biolanti didn't come out until 1989. And this game was made in 1988. Perhaps Toho put Biolanti in the game to build excitement for the movie next year, but changed their Time minds. traveler. Clearly. I tried to rationalize Time the game's traveler. abnormalities any way I could, but this would prove to be futile. Pathos's map song was the first new song You will not be allowed to get stupid. Like most of the <laughs> I was just reading that. It's hard to describe. But I'll try. I think I'm above Jupiter, more like Stupider. It started out slow and suspenseful. Yeah, I like Jupiter, okay, guys. a nice planet. Than any song in the game. But every 12 seconds or so, there would be a loud clashing sound, and the tempo changed. What I love like about this creepypasta is, like, like it's it's written five songs in, in such, like, a, a lax and strange way that it does just feel like somebody, like, rock reciting the play for play of something he actually just level. experienced. The it's not like flowery like other video game TV pastas. Yeah. The sky. But there was something odd about the mountains. Blood moon. They had a shredded paper look to them. I thought at first maybe the glitch had affected them, but it looked far too intentional to be true. I quickly noticed a whimsical something else music. About this new level. There were no enemies at all. Not even any obstacles. I should also mention that this was where the point meter started to become glitched beyond comprehension. But it didn't bother me much. I never keep up with the game points anyway. 
So without having to Let that he was so game, cool saying that. <laughs> I don't care about the <laughs> game the point. Sorrowful feel to it. It would have been rather pleasant had I heard it in a normal game. The level went on for three screens, but with no obstacles around it, and I finished it very quickly. I tried other levels of the same type to see if any enemies appeared, but there were none. There was little else to be seen in the Blue Mountains, so I tried the other level type. I started one of the orange levels. The enemies were like, you stinky, and then left. A grotesque background of tumorous orange Ew. The sky was the same as the ground, so I had assumed the game was indicating. Oh my god, it's this track! The only enemies here were Matongo spawn, but as you can see, the little bastards were everywhere. Burr, 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 burr. The music certainly didn't help with a mixture of screeching This right art, like, makes me uncomfortable. Like yeah. A theme in a horror film. It feels like if it was moving, After all, like, the little holes would move, and it'd be like a fucking chiptophobia thing. Yeah, like they would like expand and contract the as if they were breathing. So it was only a few minutes before I was headed towards a rematch with Gazora and Mogira. But this time, the sprites and attack patterns were vastly different. I fought Mogira first. <laughs> Godzilla Mogira's Sigma moment. was a flying machine with a slight resemblance to a Pascagoula alien. It was a bit like fighting Mothra. Pascagoula. Pascagoula. It attacked by spinning its front oh. tentacles like a corkscrew, and it still had an eye beam, except now it fired from the drill. <laughs> this lanky apparition has replaced oh, got ankles. Zora, and the new beast was far more Holy of a challenge. Shit. Dude, he's got ankles! Jump at a fast pace, I crush the alien. <laughs> well, I crush the alien. And of course, it tried to pin me in a corner with as much annoying resolve as ever. I defeated it using a combination of My mom got me some cheesy fiesta potatoes from Taco Bell. Let's go! I defeated them and went to go fight Titanosaurus. Dude, my mom came home this much like, earlier oh, and was just like, hey, I got you these like four cheese ravioli. And the game I was like, fuck yeah. Map with the Titanosaurus piece now missing. There was no one left to fight now but Biolanti, so I eagerly started the battle. <laughs> so I eagle too started I was the battle. I'm surprised that Biolanti started the fight in her rose form. She was immobile and used tentacles to keep me away from the main body, which took away That's my favorite guy, Jim! All for Biolante are completely expected, original. She yeah. turned into her final form after Wait, taking enough damage. These are good. Spite looked pretty damn good for 8-bit. Even he says it! <laughs> Rose patting himself on the back. Now, he, he deserves to. Yeah. slower than any other monster. Being hit by the tentacles did more damage now, and Biolante could do an acid spit. Which I managed to avoid by jumping in the screen cap. I heard that as ass spit. Not much more difficult to beat than Titanosaurus. It only took two rounds. He said he avoided it by Before jumping, Violet but it looks like he's coming straight for him. <laughs> yeah. The music had stopped, and there was a new replacing. <laughs> Get him out of here. This I hate icon that. wasn't there before I beat Biolanti. It resembled a red tribal mask, and I had a feeling of dread when I saw it. But since it replaced the base. It must be the only way to exit Pathos. I moved Godzilla to the square and started the level. It was a hellish looking place with no sky and a flickering fire in the background. Ooh. The fire looked far more advanced than anything I'd seen on the NES. There was music in the form of a slow, steady drum sound resembling a Ew. heartbeat. All I hate that crunch. The top of the screen and the life bar were gone. In their place was a single bit of text in the middle of the screen that said, Run. My feeling of dread had intensified. I cautiously walked through the level, but like the blue mountains, there were no enemies. I paced around for a minute before thinking, Run? From what? Ryan? Hit me, I, it. <laughs> I heard a noise outside my room and turned back to see if something fell. And when mm. I looked back, Godzilla was dying. I figured it must have been a glitch. Must but have been I wasn't going to play through a game without Godzilla. Must so I restarted the game and the password screen. Oh, chat never learned how to swim. Have I ever mentioned how creepy the password screen music is? Yes, I'll just, like a pretty ominous the game, track. The heartbeat. I mean. That's gonna freak you. It doesn't at all fit the mood of the game. This track right here. It's more like I shit you not has inspired so much of my discography. Maybe they made it so hmm. the kids won't cheat. 
I was quite annoyed Those at this point, boots. but I thought I was going to have to fight all the monsters again. But that didn't happen. The game started me off right where I was before I started the red face level. Ew, so did I, I hate that again, visual so much. sure to pay attention this time. We were saying it before, faces freak me the fuck out. And then I saw it. Yes. <laughs> thing. Do you know that feeling your body has when you feel like you're in extreme danger? You start to recoil and tense up as the adrenaline flows through your veins and your nerves start to feel very cold. That's the feeling I had when I took this screen cap. <laughs> I haven't seen all the Godzilla movies, but I'm pretty damn sure this wasn't in any of them. I had to do something. It had to be something the creators made up. But what kind of sick fuck would put this in a children's game? Looks like he has a little baby face. By sheer dumb luck, or perhaps the adrenaline boost? I managed to run fast enough to get away from it. it hey, why is there motion blur? Fast, so it should be motion so blur. If you saw it, you're almost certainly going to die. And when I say I don't die, think there is. I mean your monster gets killed yeah, instantly like if the creature head touches like motion blur in him. Once I had gone back to the map, I was so afraid that I was extremely Maybe it's just like different sprite resolutions blurring it a bit. Happened. Yeah. I couldn't believe what I had just seen. It couldn't have been real. It's a freaky and design even if I though. wanted to continue, I still had to get Mothra through this chase level. But as I stayed inactive on that map screen for a few minutes, my fear was replaced by burning curiosity. What the hell just happened? What was the rest of the game like? I only had to beat this level with Mothra, and then it was on to the next world. But when I moved Mothra to the red face, the game registered it as me beating the level. I was quite relieved. I tried to. I don't know why, but there's like a little bit of dread in that. Like the fact that it didn't even Trance. let Mothra go through that level, it just registered it as completion. Mm. That's odd. I was still pretty shook up from the last level when I started Trance. Trance's map music did nothing to ease the tension either. As for how to describe it, have you ever heard of the theme from Videodrome? That's the closest thing I can think of it to compare it to. I checked to see who the new monster was, and it was Orga, a monster who didn't make his debut until 2000, appearing in a game made in 1988. So much for my theories about Titanosaurus and Biollante. There's no way this game was made in 1980. Bio anti. <laughs> Bio anti. Those guys at Toho may be smart, but I'm sure they couldn't see that far into the future. If they could, they never would have gave Roland Emmerich the rights to make a Godzilla movie. Dude, I'm surprised he hasn't <laughs> made the connection that this could this possibly be, be a, a fucking like hack drop. Which just opened up even more <laughs> questions. <laughs> Who made this hack? When? How? Who and made this hack? Why? The why was the question that bothered me most. Who is this? My immediate assumption was to think Billy did this to pull a joke on me. But that couldn't be right either. Billy didn't know <laughs> what how to make a if she was British? <laughs> and even Violin if he, he did, he'd probably just do something simple and stupid, like replacing all the monsters with crudely drawn genitalia. Unless Billy had amazing game editing skills and a serious dark streak to his imagination that he never told me about. He couldn't have made this. Is it possible to put a hacked ROM into a cartridge? Yeah. Aside from all that, my eye was drawn to a new icon on the map. Ooh, Mr. Riddler. Mark. I was really curious the as to what it did. The Riddler. I'm sure you're also curious, so I'll explain the quiz levels now, since this was when they started appearing. There was one of these per map from here on, and they always appeared near the start of the map. When you start on a quiz level, you appear on a screen like this. <laughs> As you can see, there's a question at the top of a yes and no button, and an emoticon in the center. I refer to the emoticon as face. Creative. I Pause know. for a moment. No. And for convenience, I'll refer to face as the one asking the questions. Well, the music for the hmm? quiz levels was a track a actually in the game. <laughs> it's the one that ah. plays when you try. Yeah. 
blank, uh, expressionless thing that asks <laughs> a question and is dumped face within the story. Did you I get wonder the- what this could have directly inspired. Did you get face from that fucking thing? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because also, uh, Toby Fox has said that face was actually the main inspiration for Flowey. I can see that. Try to use the <laughs> Ghidorah cheat and get sent to an unplayable level. Face asks you 12 yes or no questions. He looks so and disgruntled. You move the to the buttons for your answer. When you answer, the question disappears. Live face reaction. Expressions for about 8 seconds. Then he goes back to neutral and a new question comes up. There was no time limit, nor any Literally right my face went. Answers. Really? Face has no respect for the player's personal boundaries and will sometimes <laughs> ask deeply disturbing and personal questions. For example, do you like hurting people? Have you ever killed or raped anyone? Whoa! Have you been molested by a family member? Other times he would I ask forgot about that line, I'm sorry. Mind-numbingly <laughs> stupid, like, is the sun hot or is water wet? Or just flat out ridiculous. Me when the face like, in my TV starts asking me like weird questions. And maybe once per quiz, Face would ask you a question about the game. Me when the Face asked me if I want Chick Fil A sauce with that. changes seem to have no effect on the game, except for indicating what the game creator thought of your answer. His reactions rarely made any sense, and at first I thought they were randomly generated. <laughs> like, are you don't like dogs to die? A pattern. Face never stayed on the same subject for more than two questions. Early on, there were questions that made me think Face was building up to something, only to then ask some stupid garbage. That's Here's a high Quinn, thanks for helping him. Face that I saw while playing. Hi, Quinn. I'll separate them into two categories. The expressions I were watching cuts of the NES. Expressions I didn't. First are the expressions I understood. One is neutral, his default expression. Two is angry. If you try to attack face, his expression changes to this, but nothing else happens. Three is sad. Four is happy. Number ten is literally what the Five sigma. Five is sick. Six uh, is what the sigma. <laughs> face made this expression when he was being an asshole. You'll see what I mean. What is later. this? This is Godzilla NES. Seven is surprised. Or NES Godzilla. Eight is love. Nine is annoyed. Ten is confused. And eleven is guilty or hurt. And here are the others. <laughs> Two of them only appeared once. He's mugging. Number twelve, <laughs> and I suspected they might have been in. Dude, number from, two, he's literally fucking the mewing. Their respective questions were: Do you like ice cream? And are you a tough guy? As for questions in the first quiz, luckily I had a notepad and pen handy. I have problems remembering things, so I often carry one around to jot things down. And sometimes I doodle in it when I'm bored. The so eight the is like, um, started, actually. I <laughs> I'm glad I did. Here are the first series of questions, my answers, and Face's reaction. Do you like the game? Yes. A funky are fun. Are you afraid? Yes. Are you over 18? Yes. Do birds have teeth? <laughs> He's like, what no. a funky playing this? You're an adult, you need to go get a job. But are good? No. Does the moon rotate? Yes. Have you put no! Yes. Do you like hurting people? No. Is the sun hot? Yes. Do you like dogs? Yes. Is the president good? Yes. <laughs> He's not a big fan of the government. No. Now that I've explained all that, it's time for the gameplay. After the quiz level, I tried the new green temple icon first. Wow. Maybe okay, fucking Yumi Niki so Kalimba track. The designers was clearly drugged out of his mind. It's the fucking jump scare, dude. I've been fucking I writing about that game all day. I don't want to hear more of it. As disorienting as they were, but I hate those creepy blank stare everywhere. Faces. Dude, dead ass. Whenever I fucking make Music a video about something, it follows me for like forever content. afterwards. There were two new enemies in this level. A flying ghost type thing with a trunk, and a bat with a horse skull for a face. They appear at random. A bat with a horse skull for a face. Both. 
Then I proceeded to a blue mountain level. I'm so hungry I could eat a, eat a what? How hungry? I took my time How walking hungry? through and was completely Another funny joke. Taken How funny? by surprise when this happened. Not Mokira came speeding towards me and took off quite a bit of help. <laughs> Not Mochi era. It only took me two minutes to kill him without having to worry about a time limit. But the bosses never show up in a scrolling level in the normal game. I was worried as to what other rules the game would break. After another blue mountain stage, it was time to fight Not Baron, whose replacement was one of the most bizarre. This things fight is hard. Mm. This Rosa. strange creature attacks you by kicking and also opening up his chest and firing heat-seeking missiles. It was gonna remind me of that one Pokemon. I, I fucking it. forgot what it's called. The missiles Garifurig? were sometimes a pain to deal with. It was like the fucking giraffe with like the two separate heads. Them out of the way. So Not Baron was probably the easiest of the monster replacements. The same could not be said for Not Hedora. I thought it was cool as fuck. Apparently, the source of the horse bats, Not Hedora, was the most aggravating, difficult monster to fight yet. Mostly because of his special ability. He could shriek and summon a small swarm of those horse bat things. I know there's only two in the screen cap, but every time he did this, about ten would arrive. The AI took advantage of the distraction and attacked twice as fast when the horse bats were flying around. Once Fucking Mary boss fight with, from Silent Hill 2. I went through a green temple level to kill some enemies to restore my health. Interestingly, none of the horse bats showed up after Not Hedora was killed, and that was when I got an idea. If killing all the monsters makes the red face show up, what would happen if I avoid fighting Orga and go straight to the base? So I gave it a try. Unfortunately, the game told me that there was no monster there when I tried to start the base level. And immediately afterward, the game took control of my Godzilla piece. Dude, ominous text boxes are probably like one of the best things I ever see in news, work. where it's like recaps of so something spooky happening in a game. Another chase, but first I had to beat Orga. Dude, have you ever read the the Mario the fight with Orga Uh, thing. like the one with the red face. Whoever created this game yeah. hack was Dude, that one freaks me out. The text boxes in that one are crazy. Yeah. It's fucking really sad though when um you learned that it was just like some guy doing it as a joke. Like it's not a serious ROM hack at all. He just kinda like jammed a bunch of random shit together. And yet somehow it managed to be fucking freaky. I remember when like I saw it for the first time. Like I saw it for the first time as a kid and it was like burned into my fucking retinas. It freaked me out. But in doing so, he gave himself a new weakness. Firing a heat beam into his mouth would take a devastating four bars off his life meter. With that weakness revealed, I soon beat Orga. And despite how much I had hoped otherwise, the red face appeared on the map where the base was, and the music stopped. Oh, I hate that. Silence, too. Silence is fucking I scary. I started the level and seeing that it was basically the same as the first, I didn't waste a millisecond before I started hauling ass. I soon encountered Up obstacles in the form of the ground tiles suspended in the air. Most of them you could jump over or destroy, others you had to crouch under. About 40 seconds into it, I heard the horrible bellowing and saw the spider beast following close behind me. Stacks of obstacles barely that sound down. haunted my nightmares break up as a kid. And then its way the fucking them, scary ass noise. Them into bits. And when the smaller obstacles got in its way, it would expand its jaws and swallow them whole. I was afraid, but with fast thinking and faster button pressing, I escaped him yet again. I felt I pressed really all excited, my buttons. and so I laughed and said, Not this time, asshole! <laughs> I decided to take a screen cap to celebrate. But when I said that sentence just before the level ended, it's gonna be looking as did something that made my blood run cold. It looked at me. Yeah, yeah. I called that it wave of mortal terror overtook me again. Good ass. And I sure as hell wasn't laughing anymore. He's like, don't fuck you say screen cap of the 
next level type right before I rush to the bathroom and splash some water on my face. Dude, I love that vine. take a piss that I nearly failed to contain when that fucking <laughs> He just, like, drops him in the fucking ceiling. Onto the next world. Yeah. Dementia. No! Dementia, man. I forgot. I forgot about this chapter. <laughs> it starts playing the caretaker. Game, I was getting very upset and confused. I thought about the way the monster looked at me. The game couldn't have heard what I said. That's impossible. It He's a sentient be a being. Occurrence. But why did it happen precisely at the moment I insulted the monster? Nothing about the game made any sense. The new Godzilla monsters, the weird replacement monsters, out of place imagery like Who let my grandma tumbles, into the game? quiz levels, and the red monster chases. It didn't seem to add up in any kind of meaningful way. If it was a prank, it wasn't funny in any way I could understand. And they clearly put far too much effort into it. If they were trying to make a genuine sequel with new Godzilla monsters, then why did they add everything else? Maybe it was some kind of art experiment. Some group project made by a bunch of really talented and crazy people, and they lost the cartridge somehow? Or maybe they intended for some random person to find it? It was all just fruitless guessing. As far as I could tell, there was only one way to figure out what the deal was with this game. To play it through to the end. Maybe, just maybe, there would be something in the credits. An explanation by the creators as to why they made this. Or it could be something much more cryptic and strange. Maybe even something horrifying. Before I got a good look at the dementia board, I consider replaying Trance to see if the red monster would look at me the again. The dementia board. I decided against it. I the dementia is bored. And I was also somewhat worried that backtracking might cause the game to become even more strange. The dementia board music sounded a lot like the Saturn music, except it was slowed down and played with a piano sounding instrument. Like most of these new map themes, it had a dangerous, suspenseful feel. While listening to the music, I looked at the dementia board. There were four boss monsters this time. Space Godzilla, Manda, Gigan, and Baragon. I was surprised that there were two new Toho monsters this time. But the best surprise was still the Gigan. I started the yeah. first level. Here's also welcome Lost Media Archives. The same format as the last one. Welcome. Oh no, he's back. Yes. Do you like fish? Yes. You know what that Can means? Fish. Fly? No. No. Can it spin in all directions? I genuinely think that this was inserted as an innuendo, and I think that's so funny. <laughs> yes. Does it taste good? When Do you it a spin? Woman? No. Do you I'm mean does it taste good when you bite a woman? Oh. Hello. No. Is it night where you are? Yes. Do you like cats? Yes. Oh, no time. Time for Cyclops' face. Yes. Have you ever broken a bone? No. Do you Dude, I have a valid like, argument to say that yes. water is not wet. Would you like a new monster? It makes other things wet. I wasn't entirely sure That's the argument. Water ain't wet. It makes other shit monster, wet. Exactly. I couldn't resist answering yes, just to see what would happen. You fucking dumbass. The result was. Mind blowing. The game took me back to the board, and I had a new playable monster in the form of Angiris. Let's go! Ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to play as Angiris, since he was my second favorite Godzilla monster. And plus, Angiris, I my goat, actually. Much anyway, I moved my new Angiris piece over to the level right next to it. The Mothra Slayer in this story monster. is wild. Before I get into the level description. I'll talk about Angiris a bit. Using the up and down buttons, you could choose whether Angiris stood in a bipedal stance or crawled around on all four. It wasn't a huge difference, but being able to stand was helpful in boss fights, and crawling sometimes helped dodge obstacles and attacks. He could punch and kick like Godzilla, but no tail whip. Instead, he had something far more interesting. The ability to curl up into a spike ball. ball of death and roll around. You could still take damage, but it was lessened. 
It was a good way of clearing out stage enemies, but unfortunately doing this also drained the power bar. But the spike ball wasn't the only special ability. When you press start, he would fire a beam of energy from his mouth. It resembled Titanosaurus' sonar attack, and if this was a hack, it may have been inspired by the roar attack of Atari's Godzilla fighting games. Also to note is that when playing as Anguirus, the level meter gets glitched up. Judging by the life and power bar, I'd say he's on level 10. Now on to the level. As you might have guessed from the level icon, these levels are green palleted swaps of the ground and background tiles from the Blue Mountains. But what immediately caught my attention was the water, which has a transparency effect. Was that even possible for an NES game? I know the Super Nintendo could do it, but I had never seen a transparency effect in a game on an NES. The Green Mountains music was played with the same instrument as the Blue Mountains, but the melody was totally different. It was a very simple song with a lot of abrupt pauses, followed by a loud note every few seconds. It feels weird in my ears. Anyway, I went through the usual strolling through the level, and again there were no monsters or anything. But pretty soon oh my God, the I reached a cliff above the water. There was nowhere <laughs> to go but into the water, so down I went. Return to fish. Appearance <laughs> made things a bit harder to see, but it's tolerable. After going underwater, I encountered two new enemies. Oh, dude, there was this one fucking amalgam remix that I found one time. I need to fucking find it again. It was so fucking cool. I liked the piranha because I could easily tell what it was. It was a <laughs> sane fish that would appear in a real game. But there was very few enemies like this. They didn't take much hits to kill, but they were quite annoying and could considerably trim down your life if they got close enough. They also tend to travel in packs. As for the bottom feeders, they're easy to deal with. They swim along the bottom of the screen towards you and are easily crushed like a horse you cram. or jumped over on the screen cap. You can see me about to run over one of them, and there is a pack of piranha behind it. After I beat the level, Dude, the way he fucking describes these sometimes is a bit fucking weird. Behind. I started the level. You can see I'm about to crush it, and there is a pack of piranha behind it. But it honestly seems like the type of way like a fucking basement dwelling nerd would describe like this weird game that he found. Oh my god, it's 096's family! It's its entire extended family. There were also some flickering gray static, which didn't really obscure my vision, but it adds to the very unsettling mood of these levels. The music was I don't know what this music is, but this music scares the shit out of me. Sounds like a church choir. Whenever I play, I don't. One of I don't like I like lower pitched fires. Mm. I had the feeling that the farther I I hate it when stuff sounds like it's in your ear, like little like rustling, like crushing noises that like sound like they're in your ear, like when they're directional. That's what gets me. Or like really, really deep grumbling. They're <laughs> bogging. I didn't want to admit it to myself at the time, but I realized something. This game has the power to make the player feel certain things. I don't mean in the sense that you get that you get irritated playing a crappy game or getting unnerved by something scary in a game. What I mean is that certain events in this game can instantly make you feel something. I know that sounds completely insane, and I don't blame you for not believing me. I wouldn't believe any of this either if I didn't play the game myself. But there is something very, very wrong with this game. And I still don't know how to explain it. So, then it was time to fight Baragon's replacement. Although Baragon was originally the smallest monster in the game, his replacement was the largest. It was so tall, in fact, the ground was noticeably lowered, and not Baragon's head still barely avoided collision with the bar at the top of the screen. And he was just as frighteningly bizarre as he was. Oh, huge. I love this one. You may be wondering how he attacks without arms. Well, he has the most <laughs> Did he, like, flop on the floor like a fish? But his other fighting technique is much stranger. First, he blasts a cloudy breath of pixels <laughs> down at you, which causes He's you to yeah, okay. Then he walks back to the right corner of the screen and extends a huge Gatling gun from his <laughs> abdomen. 
The penis gun. 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 Not Baragon. He constantly used it. That's so fucking stupid. Once you unfreeze, you can run up and start damaging the gun, which does extra damage to him. Oh, not his penis. This helped me to destroy him, and then it was time to play the third No wee wee gun. I decided that I was going to use Angiris to fight Amanda and Gigan, and then fight Space Godzilla as Godzilla. It was only fitting. Before getting into the battles, I'll describe the third level type, the Arctic. Dude, you're not gonna get to fucking fight the Space Godzilla, it's gonna exactly be that fucking red thing. Guess from your name. An icy tundra with a few watery segments. <laughs> the music reminded me also, of the uh, uh, of from hmm? Donkey Kong Country. If I if I needed to uh run for for a tiny bit, song. is there anything you it could hypothetically do in the interim? Tundra and freezing to death. Yeah. Wait, how long and would there you be were gone? Two new uh, creature frozen in like, a of ice. 30 minutes? Oh, easy, yeah. Way, and you have to use the heat beam to Cause, uh, ice. I wanna get some, like, snacks and drinks. Like of mm. of so, I was thinking of, like, literally running down to the gas station. Look at the TV, man. It doesn't cause any damage, skinny, man. But it is a bit annoying. Oh, look at him. Look at him, he's so scuffly. Skinny beanhead. The ice man. I jumped in, and this time I, I just don't want to miss like certain parts of the story, you know. You yeah. Want to see your first time reactions to them? I don't know them. how they programmed that, but it's pretty impressive. Another interesting thing is how the screen. I love how he occasionally just pats himself on the back for his artwork. Here you can see the He's like, other. The sprite enemy. work was so good. I wonder who did that. They walk towards you and explode. I wonder who did that. Instantly, if you attack them, sending spikes in every direction. The, the worker at Towhouse did such an amazing job. Dangerously close to falling into a pit at all times. <laughs> all right, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, run to the gas station pit. real quick. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make it light speed. Usually I walk there, but I'm gonna run. <laughs> you fucking zoom. Meow. <laughs> um, okay, be right back. I don't know. Watch Pop. You play ten. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you guys, I have the most genius solution of all time, right? Genius, genius space filler. It's called, I'm going. <laughs> My brain just fucking farted. Or can I? Or will my PC shit itself? Will my PC shit itself if I load up Outlast Trials right now? It probably will. Whenever I fucking load up Outlast Trials, it fucking, like, I'll load it up, and it'll be fine, and then the moment I fucking, like, get to the loading screen, it'll just stay on there for, like, fucking 30 minutes. It's like, oh, you wanted to load into the game? You wanted to play, like, your favorite game ever? The fucking... No. I was playing with these fucking people earlier, right? Because, like, the new event, there's a new event for Outlast Trials, where it's a fucking gas... Like, you have a fucking gas and it's like rats and shit and you have to go fucking collect the rats. And fucking dead ass. One of the dudes was uh, fucking sat in the thing and they were like, Kick him! Kick him! He's fucking AFK! He's kick fucking kick him! I didn't fucking know how so I left. <laughs> I was like, I don't wanna fucking do this. God, I'm gonna get fucking jump scared by the barrel. That's what always fucking happens. Like, whenever I fucking load this game up, I get fucking jump scared by a barrel. We're ready for a fucking um, interloping intermission intermission section. We're looking for rants. We're playing my fucking. <laughs> oh, I got fucking taken! It took me! Oh, there we go. I fucking hate when full screen games do that. Like, you know, when you're fucking. Um... The interloper is another, is another thing that I want to watch sometime. Probably the next. One of these watch party streams that I do, I'll probably be the interloper. Or that one Minecraft one that Beazle suggested that I watch. Here, let me... 
boom, bump, boom, boom. Better fucking job. That's what I got. Hello? Where's the game? Where'd the game go? Dude, one thing I am happy for when it comes to YouTube instead of streaming over on Twitch is that I don't have to constantly change the fucking tag. Like, I don't have to constantly be like, oh my god, change the game! Like, I'm- I, I, <laughs> Like, I could just keep going. Because that's something that I always forget about. I always forget to change that shit. Here, we're already gonna- we're gonna fucking- What's the game load, up? Where is it? Yeah, Andrew Gaming, that's the, that's the name of the fucking Minecraft one. It let me in the fucking tab, where's the game? Hello? This is the horror. This is the horror fucking streaming of a new game that doesn't want to fucking load. See, I have fucking desktop audio too, so you're all, you're all gonna get fucking scared by it. You're all gonna get scared by the fucking barrel noise. Here, meantime... Uh <laughs> Meantime, I can't fucking change tab. Where's the game? <laughs> the fucking Skylar Ah! <laughs> the fucking- Hello? Where's my game, yo? I want to play? Uh-huh. Where am I? No, Red Barrel fucking killed me. No. No. Am I back? Am I back now? Hey, yeah. Hey. I mistook the fucking window capture as the fucking the window capture and not the fucking one that's all the way at the bottom. This is this is our in between. Because I've been fucking addicted to this game. This shit dead ass. If I were to say what my number one game of all time to just like play, like right now is, it's this fucking game. <laughs> it's all I've been fucking playing. It's so enjoyable. Like, I'm very tempted to make a video on this game. Purely just because of how panic inducing it is. <laughs> fucking Skylar, dude, I love. I, my, I have like a friend who keeps sending me different versions of the fucking Skylar White audio. So it'll be like the Skylar White audio, but with a different noise every time. It'll be like, my name is Skylar White, yo. Boom. My husband is Walter White, yo. Boom. Uh huh. Boom. There we go. Also, this is one of those noises that I hate, like the loading menu screen, where like it's literally in my fucking ear. Like, ugh. he's like in your ears, like I oh, am. Yeah, you are the spider, and you are being eaten alive. And he's like right in your fucking like right ear. And I have to sit on this fucking screen for like the next five minutes. What do you mean my connection to the server was lost? Bullshit! Let me in! God, if we don't- if this- if the game decides it doesn't want to fucking work... Then I am planning on setting up another stream of this on Saturday, like purely just this, just more Outlast Trials. Oh, that's another thing! The audio continues. Like, if I were to alt F4 my game right now, I would still hear the audio afterwards for like another 10, 20 seconds. And it's fucking freaky. You are annihilated. <laughs> my section, my connection to the server was a lost, yo. This is bullshit, yo. Uh huh. <laughs> oh my god, the game's actually fucking frozen. The hell? Oh, no. Hello? Let's try that again.
We have time. I, I don't think Lyra's actually fucking like fucking it to the fucking store. The game hated our Skylar White bullshit. You are the spider. Oh, there it is in the line. And you are being digested alive. Dude, I know a lot of these like off my fucking heart now. Like you fucking comes along. You have no family. You have no resolute. Oh, Britain. Oh my god, the game's fucking choppy as hell. Let me turn my shit down. Oh my god, everything's on medium? Everything on low? God damn. It barely makes a fucking difference anyway. Everything looks the same to me. Oh, that is fucking choppy, though. I'm sure I'll be fine. We can get through, like, one fucking trial bus right here. V-Sync is on? Ew! Let's V-Sync. Get out of here. Make moment of our friends. You turn motion blur off. What are we playing? We're currently playing Outlast Trials whilst I wait for Lyra to get back from the fucking shop. <laughs> it's gonna be really fucking jank though. Yeah, I think on average, when I'm fucking playing this one trial, I can get it done in about 15 minutes. So... We should be able to get through the whole thing. It's a pretty easy fucking trial, this one. It's a good way because um, there's like the special coins for the event because it's a limited time event. And I really want to get the fucking outfit. It's like a whole like outfit where he has like a fucking gas mask on and shit and I really want to fucking get it. I can deal with this. We can fucking deal with it. Anyone who hates a fucking like little tingy bit of fucking frame rate loss can get out of the fucking stream. We're fine with a little fucking frame rate loss. Course of justice. Corpus delicti. Corpus delicti. Yeah, I hate that fucking word. Slurry. Oh yeah, I should look up. <laughs> should take a fucking like peepee -pee jump scare. Look, if there's one thing I know about this game, is that it is definitely a fucking Outlast game. <laughs> like, dude, if I ever make a fucking video about Outlast, I am bringing this fucking in somewhere. Like, I love this game so fucking much. It's just, it's such a fun little game. A bag! <laughs> Blacky sack jump scare! Oh, you know what else might be causing a little bit of trouble? Let me... Oh. My PC does not enjoy it when I tab out. Oh, we're alive. There we go. We're good. That might help a little bit. I just like chose I just like turned off one of the fucking things that you couldn't see anyway. <laughs> it's like middle of a fucking like watch party stream, just like fucking outlast break. Let's go! Oh yeah, this is also the, um, the toxic shark version, which essentially means that like every like five minutes or so, the fucking gas is gonna start showing up and we need to go hide somewhere in order to not get hurt. 
What browser do I use? Opera. Which... Oh, damn. Where's the rat? I can hear a rat. I hear a rat somewhere. Here we go, collect five rats. Bitch, it's just me. And then, like, a whole lot of this is just like finding keys and then bringing them back to here. We need Diamond Star and I. Fuck. Get away from me. Ah! <laughs> Didn't know you were there. <laughs> Bitch. Oh, and there's the gas. Move, bitch! <laughs> Warning. Gas. Like, that's the whole fucking announcement. Nothing more. Warning. Gas. Yeah, the fucking mustard gas or some shit. I don't know what the fuck it is. Like, the plague or whatever. Chris guys. Oh, you've seen me. Where are you? Brown, I don't need you. Chase track not fucking play the whole time. He was fucking attacking me in silence. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Also, I'm pretty sure if I can hear me, I think I have my microphone on. It's hard. See, even if I can't see them from far away, I still like to search them because then if, if like I come back again, it won't show up as question mark. It'll instead show up as one that I've already searched and I know not to go there. Oh, it's a bad time. Morning. Gas. Completed. Dude, I'd make a big, great fucking, like, PSA announcer. Like, you know, like, like, the big fucking speakers. Train A has now arrived at the station. Go get on your fucking ride. Oh, we got diamond. Oh. Juicy. Hey, I'm not ready. <laughs> no! Oh, well, that's just fucking mean. Oh, I can live forever. It's GLaDOS and Outlast. I've started flooding the environment with the deadly neurotoxin. Oh, look, there's a rat. Huh, huh, huh. Okay, so when I'm being chased, you don't play the track, but when I'm not being chased, you play the track. Makes sense to me. <laughs> A rat. Poor chap never learned how to swim. He's wiggling. He's still alive. What is the problem, man? 
I'm gonna spin them like a laundromat. Be for real. I love that video so much. Warning. Gas. <laughs> it doesn't say we're spreading gas in the facility. It's just like, warning, gas. Completed. Completed. Dude, I feel like I'm gonna open one of these and it's just gonna be like a fucking rat on the inside. <laughs> Warning, passing gas. You have nothing for me. See, a lot of this, the way that I play is just like running around like a little rat. Like I'm not sneaky in the slightest in this game. Gas. Gas. <laughs> it's so delayed. It's, we are the fucking gassed up rats, dude. Only need one more rat, too. There's normally a guy there. Hm. Which one do we need me, Star and I? Oh, that's what I need. Fuck. Morning, guys. Didn't know this game existed? I think it's been out for a while. I won't say it's been out for like the longest time, but... Yeah, 
We only need I now. Some lore. Yeah, you can find lore around and like everywhere. That's the gas man. If he gets you, he fucking like shoots you with gas, which makes you see the skin man. And you don't want to see the skin man because the skin man will kill you. My pilgrimage is complete. Oh my god. Dude, that thought you'd be longer. Long is it gone? No idea. <laughs> We're playing Outlast Trials. Ah, oh, I see. I gotta... Again, gas station speed run any percent. <laughs> I was like, oh, we'll have enough time. I don't think he's gonna be actually fucking running. <sighs> well. I gotta find one more key and then I can get out of here. Yeah, when the Outlast is trialing. He is not. I'm I've heard covered. conflicting things on this game, so I have no idea if it's actually good or not. I think it's really fucking good. It's one of my favorite games. Oh yeah. God damn. I think it is definitely though, it's like an out- definitely a fucking outlast game. If I were to fucking describe it in like in any way. Like it has like that outlast fucking like kookiness. Mmm. Like, if you turn captions on in this fucking game, you can see the absolute most, like, inane fucking shit that they say. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, but look at that. It's the corpse that I don't need. I need the corpse with an eyeball on it, not a bunny. I will definitely say this game is a lot more fun with friends, but it's also fun in the way of seeing your friends fucking panic, not in the way of actually winning and getting through the trial. Real. Like, if you want to get shit done, it's way better to just do it alone because you don't have to fucking deal with teamwork. <laughs> Dude, I've played with like the most utter fucking buffoons in this game. Oh, the gas, the gas, the gas. Not ready. You're not even who I need! Also, um... Hmm? I saw a post recently where somebody was making a list of like the worst Godzilla designs and they put Shin Godzilla in there and it made me mad. Excuse me? One of the fucking best! That's what I was gonna say. That motherfucker's one of my favorites. Where's his eyeball? I wanna crush the eyeball. I crush the alien. Well, I crush the alien. Then I will crush the alien. I just read the most base thing ever. Uh, Godzilla Minus One director Takashi Yamazaki attended a meeting with Japanese Prime Minister uh, Fumio Kishida yesterday to discuss improving working conditions in the Japanese film industry. Hmm. Shin Godzilla was in Battle finally. Cats? Did I love Battle Cats? I forgot that. I actually haven't played it in a while, I need to fucking play it again. Oh my god, he was. This makes me mad. I, w I want Godzilla cat. <laughs> oh, the skin man! Get away from me! And that's why we always carry around an antidote. 
I think one of my favorite characters in the Battle Cats is the fucking um, assassin bear. He's just so fucking like cracked out. <laughs> the guys, the guys, I'm not ready. Holy shit, they weren't kidding. It's not just like a skin or something, it's straight up him. <laughs> we gotta go. We have Giat to go. We got to go. We gotta get out of here. Uh, Dive. <laughs> I'm fucking dying to gas right now. Is it gonna be the policeman? Yeah, it's gonna be the policeman. Let me go! I don't know why I'm at I don't know why I'm acting like a soundboard. I can just kinda <laughs> Like the end of the like trial is also really fucking stressful. Cause like you gotta wait like an extra like ten seconds for like the shuttle to show up. So if you're being chased, you can't just like leave. But you have to wait even oh, afterwards. Shit. So you're like, you can hit the button, oh, start shit. the shuttle, but then you have to sit there and wait for them to fucking not hear you. Oh, really? I got a B! Oh. Let me see, did they, did they get any cool rat stuff? Hamburger. Barbecue bacon burger. I got two rat tokens! I love rats. Rats are fucking cool as hell. We used to have two rats. They were Dumbo-eared rats. They were called Phyllis and Hilda. They were fucking pog as hell. Aww. They were in my room. It's Where'd like, they go? Um, they died. <laughs> they uh. did live a very long life for rats, though. We lived like a full two years. Damn. They ended up getting like tumors and they just like, they died in like the middle of the night. It was just like an old rat thing. Oh that my sucks. god, we can go back to Godzilla and yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Am I still streaming in Discord? Yeah, I am. Okay, let's continue. Don't go into the water. <laughs> the game has a platformer element. Bottomless pits. There weren't any of these in the original game, since this was strictly an action game. But the pits were a neat addition. After getting back on land, I encountered a very unexpected mini boss. That's a Magma, walrus. <laughs> the walrus kaiju. I know this game has Dude, obscure monsters. Creating a cream pasta around the idea of a game wow. changing, but it fucking subverts its own playing, genre, it's becoming cool like a platformer instead of an action game is such a cool idea. Maguma's fighting mm. tactics were very simple. He had a freeze beam and he could charge into you. Not very challenging, but certainly more entertaining than the Matongo mini boss in the original game. One really interesting thing about Magma is that he doesn't die when you defeat him. He turns tail and retreats. This you was the first time I've ever seen any enemy monster change directions, let alone retreat. I tried to chase after him, but he disappeared after I got into the water. Poor bastard. And that does it for the Arctic. I'll talk about the Manda fight next. I forgot to mention before, but the music that played during the new monster fights is reused from the themes actually in the game. So far the themes have been Gizora's music for Titanosaurus, Hedora's music for Biolanti, Baragon and Mogira's music for Orga, Varen's music for Manda, and Mechagodzilla's music for Space Godzilla. As for the fight, Manda was a fairly crafty opponent. When it realized one tactic was ineffective, it would immediately change to a different one. Manda used quite a few tricks, like spitting fire, biting, and most irritating of all, constricting. It doesn't mercilessly drain your life down, like Gigant's Cutter, but it was by far Manda's strongest attack. One last thing to note that I found pretty Fucking cool was that Atragon shows up during the fight to help me out. Manda crushed it with ease, but it was still pretty cool. After I slayed Manda, I played through an arctic level for health power-ups, and then it was on to Gigant's replacement. A fish. When the fight started, I was very confused, because there was nothing there. Fish. I thought this was going to be like the Titanosaurus 
quote, fight in pathos. But just about the time it would have been going back to the map, a piranha appeared on screen. But it wasn't there for long. Fish boss. As soon as it appeared, the speakers emitted an ear-splitting screech, and not Gigan flew in and ripped the poor fish to pieces. Damn. Well, that's one. There's like some like specimen ten shit. That abrupt entrance scared the hell out of me. And got what an entrance. Rushing, which in retrospect was a good thing because not Gigan was one of the fastest, most unrelenting opponents in the game. Not Gigan was tough, but my new skills with Angiris helped to even the score. This was still an incredibly intense fight. Not Gigan's attacks consisted of some kind of blood laser he spewed from his mouth and a downward Ew. slash. I was expecting some hellish variant of the buzzsaw attack, but thankfully, there didn't seem to be one. The howl attack was invaluable in defeating him. I would have taken more screen caps of the fight, but I really had to concentrate. <laughs> After that, there was just one more monster left to take down. Space Godzilla. As it's her! Earlier, we'll have to fucking lock in. For this fight. Space Godzilla's fighting technique was rather frustrating, but admittedly a very clever idea. I like Space Godzilla, you Space got them Godzilla big old shoulder blades. energy to create two flying crystals which would reach the ground and become crystal spires. These spires not only block you from reaching Space Godzilla, it's too bad his movie kind of fucking sucks. <laughs> to full energy and blast you with a deadly full It's a pretty cool looking design though. you broke the spires. Space Poor Godzilla view. would eventually drain his own spires for energy until they shattered. But if you waited for that to happen, you'd probably lose a lot of life. Heat beams actually seem to re-energize the spires, so you have to use physical attacks. When you finally got close enough to hit Space Godzilla, he was no pushover. When I punched him, he hit me back just as hard. Space Godzilla does everything in his power to knock you back to the left corner of the screen so he can create more spires. By the time this was over, I only had about five life bars left. But it didn't matter because I didn't need to fight anymore. I needed to run. Here we go again. I decided right then and ah, there shit. Really Here we go again. The end of this game. As terrifying <laughs> as these levels could sometimes be, I had to beat them to get through. I decided that no matter what happened, no matter what the game. I hate how be, out of place I he looks because he's like the only amount of red I on the screen. Made sure, not to say a damn word when playing a chase. Yeah, like say what you will about it's some like of contrast. the sprites looking a bit chase, iffy, but like Red's it's is really the fucking amount of solid. Con than Godzilla yeah. The chase started off. Like you also gotta think about the fact that this is all made by one singular person. The story, the sprites, like I was everything. <laughs> Especially since I did make it at what? And could keep rolling endlessly. Did they like keep you in a state of edge? Edge. The ground and you hold the yacht of someone you love. So Riz. To, to my surprise, the hell beast didn't follow after me. It just stopped at the edge of the ground and grimaced. I guess it can't swim, I thought to myself. So I went under blood and continued moving. There wasn't anything around. But I knew something was up. The These levels go fucking nuclear. <laughs> Surely something else had to show up. Dude, I sure fucking enough, loved like the use of like the heartbeat. Heartbeats always fucking freak me out. Anything to do with like the heart generally kind of freaks me out. And the monster followed after me with a new aquatic body. I had it's a fish. No it was a shapeshifter. You know what that means? Fish. Nah. I started to get into the difficulty I had expected. Not in the blood lake. Slow me down. Me and the beast at about the same speed. The only thing that would keep me alive was fast thinking and reflexes. I encountered some bottomless pits in which mines floated up from. I assumed that if you hit one, it would damage you and knock you back. Considering how fast the red monster swims, hitting the mines would be instant death. So I went through great effort to avoid them. But that wasn't all I had to be wary of. Halfway through the chase, the Hell Beast revealed yet another surprise. 
a tentacle formed of intestine and tipped with a clawed set of jaws burst from its mouth, trying to pull me in and devour me. I only barely avoided both the tentacle and the mines, but I could tell the beast was getting desperate because the chase was nearly over. And about a minute later, I had spotted a bit of ground that served as the exit. I leaped with all the might I could muster. The beast screamed with rage and jumped out of the blood river with one last attempt to drag me down. But I escaped its grasp. This time. Did you ma imagine fucking seeing this guy as like a full like free D form? Took a deep breath, satisfied and yet <laughs> it's fucking creepy as hell. Now I was headed onto the fifth world. Entropy. In the original game, the sixth world was Pluto. Oh, new microphone. <laughs> Ironically, despite being the smallest planet. Pluto was the largest and most diverse <laughs> world in the game. Entropy has a different layout, but was similarly huge and diverse. The board music was played by a violin instrument, a melody that started out sounding mournful, and then it gets rather... I guess I would call it... distorted? It, it sounds dreadful, dude. And unnerved. Not something I would right. want to it's hear actually fucking to unnerving. Speak. Strangely, none of the levels from the previous worlds were present here. Instead, there were eight brand new icons. The bosses this time were Megalon, Batra, Megalon. and Megagodzilla. I am As Megalon, usual, crash this entire server. go to the <laughs> quiz level for another interrogation from base. But when I got there, I noticed something different. Instead of the usual goofy Ghidorah music, it was the password theme. The music change seems to be intentional, because after the first two questions at the start, the questions started to take on a darker tone. I thought we were already there. Do you like ice cream? Yes. <gasps> ice cream! Do you like clowns? Yes. Is time slipping through your fingers? Yes. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the mug. He's mugging on us. Yes. Do some people- I don't believe in the concept of time. Start some mewing. Is it safe to go out at night? Yes. Do you find it hard to sleep at night? Yes. Have you ever killed anyone? No. Do you want to kill anyone? No. <laughs> Are you actually With accomplishing their anything? No. Does life have any real meaning? No. Bro, getting deep with it. Do you like Mothra? <laughs> I knew that last one Asking was the real questions here? Question. But I had no idea what the result would be. I answered honestly. No, I was gonna I fucking like strike her down a killer or some shit. Mothra. Nobody liked playing as Mothra. You fucking game. three! And there was a good reason for that. Every other time Mothra gets hit, she gets slammed back to the corner of the screen, and she sucks at fighting because her attacks are so weak. The only benefit Mothra had was being able to fly over obstacles in some levels. So I answered no. I hope this guy fucking dies. I hope that red thing crawls out of his fucking screen and gets him. Not only with the maniacal expression, but with the text, too bad. I was taken back to the map screen, and I was shocked to see that Godzilla and Anguirus have disappeared from ah! the board, leaving only Mothra. Face <laughs> had just fucked me over. Needless to say, I was pissed. But there wasn't anything I could do. And I'm willing to bet that even if I get for yes, ripping on Mothra. I'm stuck with Mothra anyway. Face giveth and face taketh away. <laughs> I took a deep breath and got ready to explore. There were two give paths and take off. The board. I decided to take the lower one. This turned out to be face returned and told me how now. The first world ahead of me was a forest. So I started there. Almost immediately, I got an eerie feeling. Can we just pause for a moment to, to acknowledge, I like, I think it is so cool how the story does so much to build the fact, like, you know, he's getting more comfortable with the game, despite the fact that it's getting yeah. weirder and weirder. He's at least getting more comfortable with his surroundings, and he's able to at least, like, navigate them well. He's like, oh, and more even, of this wacky kooky shit. Even, 
and it even gives him a buff in in the form of Anguirus, who is basically a stronger Godzilla. Mm. And then rips all of that away and leaves him with the weakest monster possible. <laughs> I think that is so cool fucking, like... I don't know. I just, I really appreciate this moment for just how much it makes the dread set in. It's like, oh, you like Anguirus? You like Godzilla? You like the game? No! Fuck you! Bye. <laughs> the fucking like cod zombies. <laughs> bye bye. I've always been afraid of being in a forest at night. Something about all those trees make me feel surrounded and vulnerable. And the fact that I was stuck as Mothra didn't help either. Playing the game's previous worlds as Godzilla gave me a feeling of bravery. Being in control of the king of the monsters, I'd be able to handle just about anything in my way. But it's not like that with Mothra. No feeling of strength or security. Now I'm just a weak, easily overwhelmed bug traversing into the unknown. What's he say, bug? Back to the level, the music had new instruments, sounding like woodwinds, followed by a slow rhythmic drums and chiming bells. It gave me this feeling that I was intruding into some dangerous place I really should not be. After a while, I encountered the first enemies of the stage. Or at least, I assumed they were enemies. They were strange, long-legged deer-like creatures. Instead of attacking, they were just idly walking around. I went to approach them, and they ran away. I thought about shooting one with an eye beam to see what would happen, but it seemed wrong. These creatures were harmless, so I passed over them and continued through the level. About halfway through, I encountered a group of deer-like animals, and also two new creatures, a sloth-like creature with a beak climbing on a tree, and hairy raptor-esque creatures that were preying on the deer. It was very surreal watching these creatures interact. I didn't feel like I was playing a video game, but rather that I was traveling through a forest in some other dimension. The creatures ignored me for the most part, although the raptors did attack me when I got too close, or if I attacked them first. I know I shot one of them to help one of the deer creatures escape. I got clawed at, but confrontation was easily avoided by flying up to the top of the screen. At first I had to choose whether I wanted noise. to play the levels with the hourglass or the TV screen. I picked Sorry, the that's my stomach. What I got was <laughs> not at all what I was expecting. <laughs> When I pressed what the, the fuck? To start a level on the TV screen, like I normally would, this screen with an animation popped up. It was also, also, yeah, another detail. There are TV levels in this game that show you random levels. things. I wonder. I was hmm, looks at radar. <laughs> so I also found it a bit spooky because I had a shirt that looked just like that when I was a kid. He looks in the mirror. He has like a fucking like wombat head. <laughs> Like, he Bomba just looks like me. No idea what to expect from these these icons. I went to try an hourglass icon next. I was somewhat relieved when an actual level came up. It was certainly an unorthodox looking level. All brown with time measuring instruments floating in the air and gigantic grandfather clocks in the back. Isn't this from Silent Hill 3? Yes. Was the same <laughs> or 4. I was about to say, God fucking damn it. I heard the hum start and I was like, wait a minute. Something else I didn't expect. It's one of my favorite Silent Hill songs, though. Yeah, I love Silent Hill's that, free soundtrack. It's my favorite. Fleet of them. Also, the this level gimmick is genuinely really cool. Watch this shit. I took some damage, but it was nothing I couldn't handle. But the most interesting thing about this level was the colored hourglass items. There were three of these. One, a blue hourglass that made time slow down and filled the level with enemies from the past. Two, a red hourglass that made time speed up and filled the level with enemies from the future, and three, a green hourglass that set time to a normal speed and filled the level with the original game enemies. That's pretty cool. I encountered the blue hourglass first. As stated, the game started to slow down and I saw the enemies from the past, which were five different types of prehistoric animals. I don't know much about prehistory, but I believe all of these enemies represent real animals. The level went into another segment, and I encountered See, like, the hourglass, moment. and then I fought yeah. the original enemies again, 
Don't clear your steers. Five types, so I didn't take any you can never leave Silent Hill Warframe. It always haunts you, even in your dreams. And the enemies that must have been from the future. Now, whether I would kill to play this as an actual game. game. Hell yeah. Dude, it seems like a game that could, uh, I mean, like a fucking story that could easily be fucking translated no into a game. But with that thought in mind, I found this particular segment to be very eerie. And it was made more tense because everything moved faster. One of the future enemies bore a striking resemblance to something I saw in a book that was called Truden Man. Another looked like some kind of organic spaceship. There was only one of the fifth type of future creature, and when it appeared, all as the a others fucking ran angel, for their lives, leaving me alone to battle it. As a fucking it rapture. Fly, but its sprite didn't actually move, and its single attack was firing a lightning bolt from its face. Even so, it was surprisingly powerful, and I suppose it could be considered a mini boss. After defeating it, it left a health power up that restored the health and energy I had lost fighting it. Oh my god, Wolfram, you're not gonna believe this. It seemed I would need mm -hmm. all the help I could get to beat this world with Mothra alone. Well, I gotta check the, if this is real, hold on. After that previous stage I call Time Warp, the next stage appeared to be a toxic- Oh, he's waste. naming them now. As you can see, the place looks grungy and inhospitable. Grungy, that's my the favorite style! Short looping of an ambient synthesizer song. Listening to it makes me feel like I've yeah, I fucking hate the audio. <laughs> it was messing with my head the whole time. I even felt like I was choking while playing this level. The enemies all seem to be mutated to some degree. In the above screenshot, you can see green Ew! bird skulls. <laughs> Ew, I hate them. Waste to spit projectiles. There's also a brownish cow skeleton monster with spider legs. I don't like the way they blend in with the After fucking background. Level, I even saw one of the deer from the forest. It was alone, and when I saw it, it was drinking toxic waste out of a barrel with an anteater-like tongue. I was moving over to try and make it stop. Somebody then made an actual game. Oh my god. They did? Oh my god. Attacking. Yeah. The deer was scared by this and ended up running off the ground into the toxic waste. I felt bad for it. One of the birds bit me, but I regained health quickly from killing all of them. They were rather weak. I pressed onward. Of all the levels in Entropy, this was probably the most, quote, normal, in that there was little deviance from the move forward, smash things formula in the original game. I encountered more creatures through the level, like tentacle blobs, and some kind of deformed thing with human teeth. I didn't feel like provoking them into a fight, it's so I kept the up deformed the thing. Screen. I still had to deal with occasional flock of birds now and then. At the end of the level was a large bluish green lake, and then I encountered another Ew. mini boss. Some kind of a monster with a long neck and a whale skull. It attacks with a mouth projectile and by charging into you. It also could go underneath the water and rapidly emerge from a different place. It was harder to beat than the monster from the time warp, and it had a lot of help because it must have taken me three minutes to defeat it. It let out a really loud noise when it died, and then sank back into the ocean as I left the screen. Back on the board, I went to the nearest level icon I haven't seen yet, which was a white tree. As I guessed, the level was a winter-themed recolor of the forest stage. But unlike the regular forest, I didn't feel unnerved starting this one. I think the music had a lot to do with it. Music full of whimsy! Song. It almost sounded romantic. It was quite stress relieving, and the forest itself looked much less ominous and calmer than snow. I traveled through the first segment, enjoying the atmosphere for four minutes. Then suddenly I realized something. I haven't seen a single creature since I started the level. Where are all the animals? Soon after, I left the screen, and the next segment started. Dude, the this is incredibly faithful. Still in the winter forest, hmm. But now the music was gone. I was starting to feel suspicious, but then I remembered. Wait, hold on. Can I show you real quick? Like, just game. And this pause yeah. for a second. I'll share a screen. Like, like dude. Oh my god.
Dude, if I ever fucking make a video about this, then I'll fucking check that out. Like, obviously I'm not, like, this is, this is basically just standard fare. Like, this is something you would have seen in the actual game, Godzilla Monster of Monsters, but... Uh, I can I can only imagine what like the uh, the creepier worlds look like, oh and God. and from what I saw, uh, from what I saw here, like all of the sprite work is advanced. <gasps> oh shit! Oh shit! Fuck! Poison powder. <laughs> he squid. Oh, it did the oh. bang! It did the oh bang! My oh my Jesus fucking Christ, bro! I don't know how to get out. Let me out. Let me out. <laughs> oh my god. You're fucking Bro, ass, I'm dude. Here. I'm getting away. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Dude, this is like so charming, though. Like, it's incredibly well put together. Oh my god. Dude, I'm fucking hella gonna check that out whenever- if I ever fucking decide to make a video on this. Fuck yeah. Alright, you can continue. I just wanted to show you this but real then quick. then I heard something familiar. It was the 12 second looping music- Wait, fucking send me the, like, link to that so I know where to find it. I could feel my Absolutely. heart sink as I came across this horrible sight. It was a whole group of dead deer creatures- No, but dare! Judging from the blackish blue tone of their skins, they must have all frozen to death. On closer inspection, some were missing body parts. Yeah. Now I was frightened. But like I a munched on. Going. Before exiting the level, I was really hoping to see something resembling the previous forest animals in a living state. And sure enough, I did. It was a creature much like the beaked sloth, except this thing had white fur and was more like a beaked gorilla. It was walking very slowly when I saw it. Look how big a gorilla. See something alive. However, it didn't stay that way for long. A pack of raptors, who must have sensed that something else was still alive, came rushing in from the right side of the screen. The beak gorilla didn't stand a chance, as one of the raptors immediately lunged at it and ripped open its back legs. These winter raptors acted far differently from their temperate relatives. While the other raptors only attacked while hunting prey or when provoked, the winter raptors seemed to have all gone insane. They attacked everything in sight. One was running back and forth, clawing at nothing. Even the noises they made. I want to do a stream on this game. I want to play this Hell live. Yeah. As I left this second segment, I saw two raptors fighting to the death. They were both covered in injuries, and one of the raptors had been blinded in one eye. I took a screenshot, but I didn't stay to see who won the fight. Everybody! I only had to get through one more segment before I could go back to the board screen. But in this segment, I was no longer in the winter forest, but instead a very empty grassy plain with a bright gray moon in the sky. The pleasant music from Winter Forest Part 1 had returned, and immediately I started to feel dread. This is going to sound crazy, but it's the absolute truth. The game made this level from one of my memories. After a long stretch of nothing, I reached a lake, and then the moon moved down from the sky and began to hatch like a Ew, why does the moon look like a face? When it did, a curled up humanoid figure fell into the lake as the moon halves quickly disappeared. I heard a splash when it hit the water. Then a moment of silence. Then the screen began to shake, and a new creature emerged from the water. And thus, I was introduced to a monster I call the Moon Beast. This was the only screen. What a unique I name! As I was focusing all my concentration on winning the fight, and it was the most difficult. Do music. Stronger than it gave birth. This creature could have been hard to take down even with Godzilla, and with Mothra, it seemed nearly impossible. I suppose I would consider myself fortunate that the beast lacked any attacks like Gigant saw, because if it had, I would never have won this. I barely had three bars of health when I finally killed this abomination.
but what happened oh my god wait is hardly Hallie Ho Green ZX can I see that I've been trying to keep my promise and suppress this memory for years but it seems as if I have to get it off my chest. Dude, I think the one thing that like puts me this off with the story is how he like remembers exact numbers of how much health he had. Already knows about it, and I think <laughs> like if you go for something, you're not gonna fucking really remember that shit. Shot. Tell you the important oh yeah, you're right. I don't like the screenshot doesn't show anything. <laughs> the screenshot shows about full health. Back when I was in middle school, I had a girlfriend named Melissa. She Melissa. Some kind of mental Maria. Caused her to go into episodes. <laughs> when she was She's mentally ill. Episode, She's just like she me. Stand or sit perfectly straight and still, and her face would instantly lose any expressions she had before. She looked in. She would speak very clearly without any hint of emotion. She just when like me over, for real. She would start trembling. Also, yeah, he hosts and that um drawing in my server somewhere. And remain silent for several minutes. I can't really convey the feeling it gave me in words, and I won't try. You had to see this in person to understand. <laughs> but despite you this, wouldn't understand. she was a very kind person, and I cared about her dearly. Despite this, bro. Night and look at the stars. But one night, she didn't say anything to me at all. She just stared directly at the moon. She's mewing. Trembling. I tried <laughs> to talk mewing. to her, but she suddenly sprung she up. And ran right that feels like track. awful to say because I, I know it's like her, but I was too late. She got hit by a truck. Oh. And was killed that night. I looked her right in the eyes when the wheels went over her neck. Oh. That sight has always haunted me. I know that the game knows about this because after I defeated the moon beast this happened. Turn down your volume, like right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> whoa! <laughs> Jesus! Oh, oh by the, the way, first this part. This moment. Wait, turn down your volume. Turn down your volume. It's, it's, it's muted. Okay. Good. That that was an insanely mad transfer. Also, you know the part where like kill, 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 kill all over the screen. Yeah. That that inspired the Omega Flowey moment from Undertale. Oh my god. Burst out screaming, and my hands were. Jesus Christ. I knew that Ew, first part. If he just fucking left it with that first but part, then. No the fucking just like the Melissa. Get out of my ear. My brain fucking hate whispering. That's like the one thing I can't fucking stand in horror is whispers. Like that are like really deep whispers in your ear. It seem possible. But what other explanation was there? It was oh, like no, no low to your god. What now seemed obvious. The game is alive. And not only that, it also can establish some kind of mental connection with the player. And yet, I couldn't convince myself to stop playing. I don't know if it was the game messing with my mind or just my stubborn curiosity. Turns out the fucking red thing's Melissa. <laughs> Even with the previous revelation, I really wanted to see this through to the end. Even more than God, I that'd be crazy. Dementia. <laughs> Terrifying as it might be. Even dangerous. He's like, you're fucking bad. Why did you jump my friend? If I quit playing, I would never be able to stop thinking about it. If I tried to restart the game, it might go back to being normal again. How many no. people ever get to witness something like this firsthand, let alone be able to take screenshots of the whole thing? Fucked up as it was, this was the experience of a lifetime. But even so, I couldn't take any chances with my health. I had the TV remote right next to me, ready to turn the TV off in case I felt I was in actual danger. And if that didn't work, I would pull the plug out of the wall. Was it, did have you ever seen any fucking situation that involves sure a TV enough, when something spooky that, happens and they try to turn it off? That shit does not turn off. Has, it seemed to be confined to you don't fucking throw a brick at it. And whatever its mental connection could do. The latter was what worried me. I still didn't know what I was dealing with, so I wasn't about to underestimate it. I took a break for a few minutes to calm my nerves, and then it was back to the game. And speaking of TVs, 
there was a TV screen icon right below the white forest I had just left. And because Dude, I'm not gonna lie, I jest, so but that fucking whisper actually gave me fucking goosebumps. To see what happens. Although I expected yeah, the same yeah. That was like a fucking red face moment. Totally different one. Weird. The music for this one was the Neptune board music. Finning, I suppose. He's yapping. Since it's a fish man, after all. I can't help but wonder what the point of these things are. There was only one more TV icon, so I figured it must have a unique animation of its own. I was going to make Push sure it in the I Discord? Okay. what it was before I left Entropy. But then it was time for another level. The My PC alt isn't in your Discord cries. Thing, so I went to that, <laughs> and I started up in a gold labyrinth level. My health and power oh, were really yeah, level. Fucking... He says that like sure, Ryan Griffin. I was I'm gonna look at all my phone, I'll send it to you. Unknown, nearly dead. Yeah. I also noticed that my Mothra sprite had shrunk into half Oh, I hate that bass. Size. The music was a slow, ominous drum beat with female vocals kicking Boom. in about a minute Boom. into it. Quite haunting. Boom. The gold labyrinth itself was an Boom. anomaly. Oh, damn. I'm not sure how this level would have played out if I were using Godzilla or Aguirus. Because flying seems necessary just to get around this place. Another thing that caught my attention was that when you go left, your monster. God, I love this creepypasta so much. Left. That sounds stupidly obvious, but in the original game, you were only supposed to move to the Here, right. Here, there it is. I sent it to you. So when you try to move left. Oh, that's awesome. Dude, apart from like a few like little small things, which can just be kind of like jogged up to oh, it's just like a guy narrating his experience from a game. This is really fucking cool, dude. Yeah, because it's it, it's it, just like, a guy narrating his experience. Yeah. Totally new. The amount of Things world of building of here new is like so strangely pieces. good. It's so <laughs> detailed for no reason. It's because I'm assuming like a lot of these like areas aren't in like the actual exactly game, right? Oh no, like everything past um, Mars, like starting with Pathos, has been a completely original world. Damn. The only reused assets are basically just the mon like the playable monsters you see on screen. But that's only Godzilla and Mothra. The sprites for Anguirus are completely original. It felt like this level stretched on forever. He's really good at fucking replicating the art style then. wandered around the level for at least 15 minutes before I finally saw something. It was a creature that wasn't gold. Seemingly the only one of its kind in the level. You know what? He's like fucking able to pat himself on the back. This is fucking great. It just walked back right. and forth on the platform. Bro made an entire alien world. It, that a flying machine swooped down and grabbed oh. it. And Yoink. Then flew off with it. The machine <laughs> said, nah. had not seen me. So I decided no, to, uh, uh. to see where it was no, taking uh, uh. the creature. No, uh, uh. No, uh, uh. The machine stopped oh, the grinder. with a large cauldron-like object in the center. The machine hovered over the cauldron and dropped the creature into it. The creature emerged from a hole in the cauldron's side, now adorned in the same gold color as everything else. The machine flew off. I'm not sure what to make the of it. The The Because I found the exit soon after. That's how Golden Freddy was made. When I got back to the oh board, I realized that the bosses haven't moved at all. A bit odd, but it didn't bother me. It made planning my route through entropy easier. There were two new icons to explore. The indigo cliffs and a black version of the labyrinth. Since there were only three black labyrinth icons, which were surrounded by bosses, I played the indigo cliffs first. It was a lot like playing the blue or green mountains. The level graphics have the same shredded look to it. There's also a recolor of the clouds in the moon. Angiris was a scrapped character in the OG Godzilla Monsters and Monsters? That's pretty cool. Caught that was oh shit. A deep rumbling noise. One of the first things I encountered was these multicolored creatures with big Ew, I hate their faces. from a small cave in the ground. Too they many holes. They a synchronized shaking sound, and they walked <laughs> right in a group <laughs> after emerging from the cave. Oh, like the fucking things from Princess Mononoke. No other way to go. I found the route. More and more emerged. Yeah, I love that movie. That's one of my favorite fucking movies of all time. Hell yeah. The pathway ended in a cliff. I love Studio Ghibli. I was Ghibli. shocked to see that upon reaching the cliff, 
all the creatures began jumping off into the abyss. I've seen enemies walk off cliffs before, but I've never seen NPCs commit mass suicide like this. Very unsettling to start off a level. I continued on, flying over various stages. A dinosaur like from Jurassic Park. Another group of multicolored bobbleheads were jumping up and down, only to be snatched up by large birds, which I'm fairly certain are sprite versions of the giant condor from Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. I defeated some of the condors in battle, but it bothered me that these bobbleheads seemed to be so eager to Feels die. Feels weird to just see like a regular if ass bird. Alive, perhaps the creatures in that bird that I hate. Alive, that fucking that bird, bird that, that I hate. That hate. If this behavior is any indication. What provokes them to do this? In the back of my mind, I also suspect that the glowing moon in the sky is the reason. At the end of the level, again, saw like such cool world building. Marching up to a large monster and being devoured. This was starting to disgust me. So, acting on impulse, I fired off eye beams at both the monster and the bobbleheads. I destroyed the cave. The monster became angry and ran through the remaining bobbleheads to fight me. Although it lacked any ranged attacks, it was relentless, but it was no match for me. I was in the home stretch now. He's like, what the Up fuck, the my bosses, scrunchy my munch. My plan was going through Batra first, then Megatron. After that, I would watch the last TV screen, play the Black Labyrinth before fighting Mechagodzilla, and lastly, go through the chase with the Hell Beast. I was curious to see if it would be in a new form again. But first things first, it was time to beat up Batra. Dude, plot twist, the game As goes like normal. He started off in his larva form. The music was Baron's battle theme. Whenever the game puts in a new Godzilla kaiju with more than one form, that other form always shows up. For a game that's otherwise inexplicable, it's rather startling with its consistency and accuracy with the new kaiju bosses. The fight started off simple. Larva Batra fought in a similar fashion as Magma did, charging back and forth and occasionally firing off lightning from its horn. During the battle, I noticed that Mothra's combat capabilities have been altered in my favor. The eye beams did twice as much damage as they did originally. Now they were as strong as Godzilla's punches. The poison powder was simply improved. It also did this nice thing where it would actually hit an enemy when you use it. In the original that was such game, a rusty the delivery. Fly, <laughs> the rage behind that. Yeah, you would get knocked back the same way as if you just ran straight into them, which was extremely annoying. But not anymore. I could change direction and fly around, which was a big help. Because fighting Imago Batra was much like fighting a clone Mothra. Although Batra is distinctly faster and stronger. No longer impeded by its slow-moving larva form. Imago Batra was a fearsome opponent. Although it lacked the horn lightning, oh my God, I didn't it had a new, more powerful eye beam. Batra could change direction just like I could, so this battle involved a lot of flapping and flying around. It was pretty damn fun, to be honest. So after defeating Batra, I was excited to see what Megalon would be like. But first, I went through an Indigo Cliffs level and shot through a lot of creatures for health power-ups. So about Megalon, his music was Gigant's theme. Makes sense since Gigant was his battle partner in Megalon's one, and so far only, film appearance. He was a lot like Mogira, but faster and with more weapons. He'd start off charging off with his drills. I like to fly back and forth around him, which seems to really annoy him. After a few seconds, he'd step back, turn around, and start spitting out grenades. Those were a pain, because they bounce when they hit the ground. Last He's like explaining gravity to us. Grenades aren't good, because forward, they explode. So it was to duck under, and then shoot him with eyes. <laughs> Overall, I describe him as strong and persistent, but dumb. I was now nearing the end of Entropy. Bullier. I had just taken down Megalon, and I started up the last TV screen. Yeah, he's fucking stupid. I get this time. The result was unpleasant. The music oh. of this gruesome scene was the password theme. I couldn't figure out why this animation was so sinister and violent in comparison to the other two. The whole game seemed to be growing more benevolent. 
As I went on to finish entropy, I began to feel you mean malevolent? drained. It's hard to describe, like I had suddenly became tired when I wasn't before. Most likely it was just the tension from all Stop. that has been happening Give it time. getting to me, but who knows. <laughs> That's evil. Gets fucking executed. The last level type on entropy is what I call the Shadow Labyrinth. The scenery The Shadow Wizard Labyrinth. <laughs> Shadow Wizard Money Gang, we love casting spells. Similar to the unforgiving cold loop. This song is sponsored by the Shadow Government. Legalized nuclear bombs. The music was my first sign that this level was going to be distressing. I traveled through the maze for about a minute, and I noticed that there weren't any creatures hovering around. It was an odd transition from the gold labyrinth, which was overrun with creatures, to this level that had nothing at all. But then this might be a good thing. Maybe there wouldn't be any obstacles, and I could get through the level with ease. Then the screen went dark. And immediately, I snapped out of my daze for a few seconds earlier. Everything had been darkened so that the only thing I could see was the monster sprite. I couldn't tell where I was going, and I ended up frantically running into walls. I heard a noise, the sound of a crowd running through a hallway. And along with the running came the roars. Loud, mm. roaring sounds. Which I could describe as something like a rabid dog the That's size That's horrible, of dude. Not being able to see theory. something, but being able to and hear I could it. I tell that whatever was making this noise, there were lots of them. I knew there was something there, but it wasn't until I did some screen cap editing that I got to see what my pursuers looked like. Ew! At the time, I couldn't see where they were, or where I was going. I was literally running blind, and this mob of beasts eventually caught up with me. All I could think was, NO! As I saw my life bar rapidly decline. <laughs> the G mod. The monsters had taken no! me down to half of my total health when I was saved. The light came back on and the attackers had disappeared. The roar is so, loud, the roaring sounds. Was revealed. Find the exit before the lights go out and a pack of monsters maul you to death. I was in panic mode now. Moving as fast as I could while trying every path I could find for a way out. As I played through the level, the lights went out a total of three times. The second time, dude, I'm making I a thumbnail right now for the Godzilla NES stream, and uh, I I think I'm kind as of I cooking. Close to it, the monsters Let's go. Seemed to all avoid me until the light came back. The statue wore them away. Somehow. Look at this. I was safe as long as I stayed near the statue. But at the same time, I had to leave to find the exit. Let's go. The Shadow Labyrinth turned out to be much smaller than the Gold Labyrinth. Fucking Game Boy Palette. To navigate to the end. But before the exit, there was a row of halls leading straight down, with no way out once entered. You either go to the exit before the monsters reach you, or you died. Thankfully, I made it out. Only one I more made boss. It out. Mecha Godzilla. I started the battle and got something unexpected. Not only did my life shoot back up to 100% again, it seems to do that randomly, <laughs> but instead of a replacement boss, I was fighting Godzilla. But any Godzilla fan worth their salt can figure this out. Mecha Godzilla started off like fighting a clone Godzilla, but his disguise burned away after only three life bars. Usually a transformation only occur at the halfway point. At this point, it was like fighting Mecha Godzilla in the normal game. It felt kind of nice to fight one of the original game enemies for a change. Although he was exactly beam. Like normal. He also had a rainbow beam and finger. Get that LGBT beam. Killed. Doing the old trick of backing him in the Mega Gay Blast. In a spot where he can't hit me. But that was always a cheap trick anyways. But after getting him down to half his health, something weird starting to happen. His sprite started to glitch in much the same way as Gizora had way back in the first world. And it loops back After to a few the seconds, beginning. The glitches began to form a new shape. And thus, the game had created not <laughs> Mecha Godzilla. The fucking man moves. And I discovered that this visual glitch was somehow related to the game recreating things. The human face on this one gave it a very uncanny look. 
It was one of the stronger replacement monsters, and had the most firepower. Pictured here is its mouth beam, which I got caught in the middle of. Even though it was a bit stronger, it was also slower than its original counterpart, and couldn't jump around as much. I won the is fight that a handsome squidward? Out of line of fire, bombarding the machine with poison powder as I flew over it. One last thing to do. The Hell Beast Chase. Oh boy. Oh, beast. Oh, I might as well get this over with, I thought. The entropy end chase ended up being exactly what I was afraid it would be. A labyrinth level. All the other oh, dude, that's even worse. although difficult, were extremely straightforward. You just had to run to the right and not get touched. But this took all the simplicity out of it. There was no telling how big this labyrinth would be, or where the exit was. And now, not only did I have to constantly backtrack to find my way out, I also had to avoid getting one hit killed by the red monster. And for those first 30 seconds, it didn't show up, but I knew it would. And as I started to pick up the pace, I heard a loud flapping noise. And there it was, in a flying form. It flew with bat-like wings and was as fast and relentless as ever. For reasons already stated, this was probably the most nerve-wracking of all the end chases, and as such, I had to keep my focus on the game and not take screen caps. However, I did take one of the red monsters doing something I found very interesting. I had managed to lose it by going through a different path than it apparently expected, and it was blocked from attacking me by one of the organic walls of the red labyrinth, or so I thought. It tried clawing through the wall for a second before it opened its mouth and tearing the wall apart with its intestine jaws. But for those brief milliseconds that the monster was held back might have been the key to me finding the exit. The path to exit was long and complex, but from what I remember I went up and then back towards the left. I'm still not sure why I chose that particular way, just a lucky hunch I suppose. I was sweating furiously, but my luck has saved me yet again. Did I, I swear to God, some of the things that this guy fucking says pops me off. There were only two I'd be like, seriously, I'd be like, huh. I guess I'm just lucky like that. ...ultimate world called... Extus. In the brief instant before the transition <gasps> New microphone. The entropy and Extus, I was hoping that I would get Godzilla and Anguirus back. As the board appeared, I saw that my wish was half granted. I had Godzilla back, but no Anguirus. Yes, I would have preferred both, but despite Anguirus' neat abilities, I would have chosen Godzilla if I had to pick between the two. Extus had two different colored temples, white and pink, a pyramid, what looked like some modern buildings, and two other icons I couldn't figure out at the time. The new bosses were Kumunga, Gorosaurus, and not Ghidorah, whom I was dreading to see, let alone to fight. With Godzilla back, I was excited again, and eager to explore, yet still cautious. I went to the quiz level first, just as before. This time, Vase's questions were more random than ever. Do elephants breathe? Yes. Have you ever been molested by a family member? <laughs> Have you ever Casual question. Anyone? Wow. No. Is green your favorite color? <laughs> yeah. Is the computer the pinnacle of modern technology? Yes. Are you a tough guy? Yes. Can you fly? No. Can you stand on your head? Yes. Do you hate raccoons? No. Do you feel blame? No. I feel targeted. Would you like a new monster? Yes. Will you miss me? Bobby. Yes. Will you miss me? I was happy me? that I was getting a new monster, but that last question bothered me. Will you miss me? Is base referring to when I finish the game? I thought. Base is Melissa! Since the revelation of the game's truly otherworldly nature, 
I wasn't sure what to think of Face, or anything else in the game. But something about that last statement gave me a genuine feeling of sadness from Face. Uh, hello? As I was thinking about this, <laughs> the game had gone back to the board. I had a new monster, but I had no idea who it was supposed to be. <laughs> the sprite had a slight resemblance to Rodan, but the head was- Dude, I swear to God, if he gets to the end and he doesn't like reveal I that either Face or Red, it's actually fucking Melissa. And started the level. When I started the level, this screen appeared <laughs> with the text, Find the Gem. Presumably- Dude, I need them planning Find on- my pages. Find my pages. That, Collect my, my Pikmin. At my new playable monster, a hairy, dark blue creature with bat wings and a skull-like face named Solomon. And I also found that my Solomon. path was blocked by a beam of light and a small pillar with a plate on it. I figured that this beam of light was blocking the exit, so I had to find the gem and drop it on the plate to deactivate the beam. How exactly I was going to do that, I didn't know. There wasn't anything in the original game requiring you to find an item to beat a level. I'd have to find out when I obtained the gem. The only direction I had to go was left, so on I proceeded. Solomon was an interesting monster. Does he, the um, least. it's Salomon. He was capable of both flight and a heat. It's, um, both of which to be no, very um, useful. Shithead he and Shafid. And slash with his wings. But he couldn't duck. So hi, Rusty. The White Temple's music hi, was a vocalizing choir. <laughs> hi, Squidward. Hi, Squidward. It's hard to describe, but it had a very holy sound to it. It wasn't long before I started running into waves Whimsy. of strange new enemies. Ew, I hit their eyes. They did little to stop me. I ran past them while slashing and didn't take any damage. There was a pause between each wave of enemies. After you have killed about ten, there wouldn't be any for about a minute. Then the next wave would appear. After five minutes, I noticed holes in the floor and ceiling. Guillotine-mouthed creatures were rapidly flying up and down these crevices, so I had to time my jumps carefully, because I didn't know if I'd get another shot at this. Luckily, I managed to get through without a scratch. I'm just lucky, I guess. HP Lovecraft, my not so beloved. Hallway, some kind of mini <laughs> That's actually a fucking angel, you're it kidding me. Very fast. It had some kind of projectile that it shot in four directions. But I killed it quite easily using Solomon's heat beam. When the battle was over, I had my gem, which was inside the creature's head. I found that I could pick it up and hold the gem by walking over to it and holding down B. I made the long trek back to the start, deposited the gem on the plate, which deactivated the beam. I left this the stage holy and ass shown music. What was probably the strangest quirk relating to the Solomon monster. Every time you complete a stage <laughs> or defeat a boss with Solomon, this screen appears. I have no idea what still the best 1973 means. Neither the date nor the phrase has any meaning or significance to me that I can think of. It's and still, it's, it's still the best, and that's his birthday. The next level I played was one I call Bronze Pyramids. I used Godzilla and found he had been leveled up to 12 since I last played as him in Dementia. The Bronze Pyramids were fairly normal as far as these levels go, but the visuals were quite still interesting. Still the goat. Almost unusually colorful and lively. The music had a fitting Egyptian style to it. It was slow and mysterious sounding. I strolled through the level, fighting off the various enemies. None were too difficult, although the ants could be a pain if you ran into too many at once. My favorite enemy was this giant reptile I encountered halfway through. It's a dinosaur from Jurassic Park. At the end of the level, I came to a giant pyramid, and I engaged in yet another mini-boss fight. Although this one was a bit different, because I had to fight two of these monsters at the same time. Individually, I could have dealt with them easily, but fighting both of them at once was challenging. But I sped things up by tricking one of the twin beasts into barbecuing his brother by jumping when he uses his flame breath. After I defeated the twin monsters, I noticed something strange after returning to the board. I was now able to move my monster piece anywhere on the board, without limits. 
Normally, Godzilla could only move two spaces each turn, and Mothra could move four. I wanted to try out Solomon some more, so I moved his piece over to one of these brown pillar looking icons with colored dots and started the level. When I got to the level, I then realized what the level icon represented. Oh my god, it's Ina! Totem poles. I was greeted by two of them right at the beginning. The music had a Native American sound to it. It seemed to be using the same instruments as the Entropy Forest. It was noticeably different, but just as for bonding. Making him barbecue for bacon bonding. burger, his brother. With nothing else in sight besides the totem poles. I didn't realize until then that I wasn't expecting another level with nothing. Thought the sun was gonna come to fucking life like the angry sun from Super Mario After World. You know what that reminds me of? Doom.exe. Fucking Doom.exe type shit. Left me feeling like That's something I want to make a video watch. about at some point. Only about 10 minutes after I started <laughs> Extus, I was already How did we go through. back in microphone quality? How did it get worse? Level, I tried out one of the TV screens to see how strange they were this time. Even more strange than before, apparently. The music for this was the Uranus theme. <laughs> nah, no, Uranus. Back to <laughs> level. And this level was quite a surprise. It was a normal city level. The colors were gloomy, but even still, this was quite a shock. This is the kind of level I would expect to see in a Godzilla game. And I was kind of mad that I didn't get to play it earlier. The music was the Earth theme. I found it strange that a level fitting a Godzilla game would show up this late. But there's no point in crying over spilled milk, I suppose. I moved Solomon over to a grayish green icon which turned out to be a giant high-tech laboratory of some sort. Lots of mechanical drones in this level, but oh, damn, funky too. just like the white temple enemies. The music was a gritty industrial beat. There was also a strange flying cyborg enemy, which was annoying because it would fly away when you jumped to attack it. Dude, if there's like a list that like, also puts the all the fucking tracks used, that'd be fucking perfect. I love this track. Kind of right? Inside. As you would guess, sometimes the monsters awaken and shatter through the glass. I tried to get past the stasis tanks as fast as possible, because the monsters inside proved to be vicious little bastards upon release. At the end of the level was an elevator, which I used to go down to the bottom of the level where the exit This is straight up actually a xenomorph. Along the way, I was shot at by security drones. Oh, dude, but you know what's something I never fucking so finished? Um, Alien Isolation. The last level type was the I've heard that game is really good. It's really fucking good, dude. I like I want to make a video just talking about like the Xenomorph AI alone. Cuz it's so fucking good to look into. They're incapable of causing damage. So what you do is run through the level smashing as many as you can to get all the power-ups. One run through these levels would get the life meter back up to full, and I would greatly appreciate these levels later. The Heart Temple's music reminded me of a circus tune. It had an overly cheerful sound to it, which gave the level a really weird feeling. Who'd win, Mirror Pyramid Head? Having seen all these levels, is that I even a fucking question? I would get fucking stomped like a little the ant. For this fight was Gazora's theme. It was during this fight I realized that Solomon was overpowered. A single well-aimed slash can take down as many as four of an enemy's life. Due to this, the fight was over very quickly. Gorsaurus had no projectile attacks, or anything else that could match Solomon's deadly claws. But I kept the fight going just long enough to see if Gorsaurus would use his iconic kangaroo kick. And I was greatly pleased when he did. Even though I knew Solomon was my fighting ace, I used Godzilla to battle Kumonga, just for variety. I briefly considered using Mothra, but of course, Godzilla won out. Kumonga was also a simple opponent. No heat beams or anything. He attacks by Ahoyanga. jumping at you, stabbing with his mandibles, and also uses his signature webbing stream to paralyze you. Once you get webbed, Kumonga will sometimes take the opportunity to attack you. But it's mostly a way to buy some time, like Azor backing you in a corner until the time runs out. His music was Hedorah's theme. With Gorosaurus and Kumonga defeated, I was at the end of Exodus. Before I fought not Ghidorah, there was something I had to do. 
I wasn't expecting much from it, but for documentation's sake, I took a look at the other TV screen. This is what it was. I don't think there ever was Fossett much man. Let that TV sink in. <laughs> if I were to guess, I'd say it's some He's not allowed in. controlled manifestation of the cartridge's abilities. Or maybe all this makes perfect sense to the Humunga, game. more like Ooga Booga. Who knows? Anyway, Mr. Fawcett's theme was the Saturn music. It was time for the opponent I had been dreading. Not Ghidorah. Although I had gained courage with Solomon's combat advantages, I was still nervous. And when I started the fight, I was immediately confused. My opponent was not Gizora. Ankle. I defeated the imposter with a few strikes, and then not Mogira appeared. Then it made sense. In order to get to it's a boss rush. I had to battle all the previous replacements first. And battle them I did. After I beat not Mogira, then not Varen appeared. And after him, it was not Hedora. And after him, not Baragon, then not Gigan, and finally not Mecha Godzilla. I tore my way through them until finally I made it to not Ghidorah, who was a Dorat. Once I stopped laughing, I destroyed him with only two slashes. The music stopped, and I thought I was going back to the board. But the battle wasn't over yet. The fucking Megazord! The real fight <laughs> was against the Chimera, a monstrous hybrid of all the replacement beasts. This was by far the most difficult boss yet. Every attack of this would cut down whole life bars per use, while attacks against him were greatly weakened. Solomon Slash, for example, was now lucky to take away one half a life bar. During this battle, I gained a great appreciation for two things. The boss's fight time limit, and the heart temple. Had it not been for those things, I might never have beaten this boss. To take down this behemoth, I came up with a strategy. I would Remember that one time King Ghidorah was encouraged to cowardly dog? As one what? Began to get dangerously low on health, I would take uh -huh. him to the heart temple while fighting Chimera with the other. I should count my blessings that Chimera couldn't regain lost health. A very interesting thing about Chimera was that the colored section of the body wasn't a ten minute scene of them flipping to to around before coming points. together. So each body part effectively. Dude, I used to fucking love Power life. Rangers when like it would come on as the a kid. The was invincible as long as the other parts were present. Fucking pog as hell. Be the last part to be destroyed. Like I remember I think the one that was In on. Addition to being difficult, it was the fucking channels that I would watch was the fucking so beast far. one where it was like the fucking T Rex and all that. How many times it was I like the T Rex a tiger. Ooh, yeah. the timer, but I lost count around thirteen. Eventually, I had destroyed all the components but the head which now flew around on its own at an incredible speed. Chimera fought well, yeah. but I was extremely determined, and once he was reduced to a head, he no longer had the power to defeat Solomon, and I heat-beamed him into oblivion. And then, the Chimera was no more. I was exhausted after that now fight, Red. fight, and worried that might affect my performance in the end world chase level. The headquarters icon was replaced, but not by the Hell Beast face. Instead, it's Jesus! It was a crucifix. I was completely stunned. I wasn't excited Dude, I learned about recently that a lot of people in Japan don't see crucifixes as like oh, a reference to Jesus. They see crucifixion as a reference to Ultraman. They were predictable. I had a basic idea That's awesome. Of what to Ultraman now, here, is my Jesus. I was at the end, <laughs> and the icon was completely different. Because it's like a, it's like a minority of people in Japan that are actually um, Christians, so they see a crucifix and they're like, "Oh, Ultraman!" I attempted to start the level with Solomon, but I couldn't. I got this notice that simply stated, "Solomon can't enter here." It's like, no. It didn't say why, but I think maybe it has to do with Solomon's demonic appearance. Since Solomon was out of the question, I went with Godzilla instead. Oh no, it's Once a graveyard. <laughs> The crucifix made sense. The level. It's Melissa! 
I was still on edge, thinking this was some kind of trick. The last level had always involved me running from the demonic beast, and I wasn't going to be fooled into thinking this would be any different. So I started out running, but after a minute without interruption, I slowed down. It was during this time that the music caught my attention. I knew it sounded familiar when I first heard it, but it took me a while before I realized what it was. An 8-bit rendition of Prayer for Peace from the first Godzilla film. A very sad and powerful song, even in this form. At two minutes into the level, I encountered something that I wasn't sure how to react to. My first instinct was to run, but this blue statuesque being simply floated in place, and I felt compared just to stare at it for a time. Since this was a grave, and it was floating over a chapel, I guessed that this was some kind of angel watching over the deceased. It gave me a strange but- I feel like you're about to tell me to pause and be like, Oh, you know how to say that it's like, a, like a red aggressive thing and there's a blue really chill thing? Somehow. <laughs> you know I what? I never thought of it, but this is probably where I got this familiar to me. <laughs> I was like, God fucking damn it. I was going to leave Shameless Godzilla <laughs> NES ripoff. <laughs> and its presence warped the music into a terrifying discord him. and transformed the level desecrating the tombstones as a new ground appeared, comprised of blood-soaked bodies. I could feel my heart beating out of control. I had no chance of escape with the monster that close. It lunged with a kill. But the angel got in its way. The demon roared and started clawing through the angel's leg, and tears of blood streamed from her eyes. I wanted to save the angel, but there was nothing I could do. I had to honor its sacrifice and run, and so I ran through the hellish landscape as fast as I could. The beast soon caught up. Oh, ew! Why did it have to move to my right ear? the body of the angel, whose legs it had torn off, and this sight made my terror change into anger. I now found myself hating this horrible monster. Give me back there was my no gamer doubt in girl, my mind Sonic! It was pure evil. And I wanted it to die. You when I got to me. the end, I remember how it responded to my insult and trance. I spoke to it. You told it to fuck off. You're going to pay. Mm. This was its response. God damn! I had no idea how I would follow up on that threat. Loud as hell. And nothing could have prepared me. For the horrors of the final world. Zenith. <laughs> what a town, right? And here we are. At the final world. I don't like to discuss this part. <laughs> it's like a transition. It fucking, like, in the head, much. like, scoops back or in a new place. It's something I have to do. <laughs> so that I can put this behind me. People deserve to know. At this point, I was well aware by that. of the game's unnatural nature, but Zenith was different. Dude, loud stuff doesn't worlds. scare me. Loud stuff While doesn't really get me. While the certainly strange and sometimes frightening, the world of Zenith was a nightmare. And I didn't have to go any further than the board screen for an indication that something was wrong with Zenith. The first thing I noticed was the blood-red texture of the board and the music, <laughs> which was an eerie whistling tune. <laughs> I noticed King that I had boss fight transition. Back, and I felt better for a second. <laughs> then I scrolled over to the right to see who my enemies would be this time. This time, it was Destroya and Ghidorah. But judging from the icon, it was a different Ghidorah than the original, standing on the ground instead of flying. The grotesquely detailed pinkish-red icons also caught my eye. I couldn't tell what it was supposed to be. And I Flesh was afraid world. to find out. Going back to my side of the board, I decided there wasn't much choice but to do my usual routine in going to the quiz level before doing anything else. I was not ready for what had happened. I jumped back when this appeared, oh, accompanied ew. by a terribly distorted version of the password theme. It looked as if Face had fallen victim to some terrible glitch. 
Oh, it's actually freaky. I hate that. Will you miss me? Did he know this would happen? My thoughts were stopped short as I noticed the screen was glitching and seemingly falling apart while I was inactive. So I quickly rushed out. And when I got back to the board, I had somehow gained a new monster. Dude, I fucking I hate areas of games where it's like one. you're not supposed to be there. To select it like you do something that you're not supposed happened. to do and then the game's like, yeah, you weren't fucking supposed to do that. Ew, no, don't do it again, don't do it again, don't do it again. What the hell was going on? The game's I was expecting another was fucking loud me, jump scare. And I hadn't even started the levels yet. I couldn't understand why I was randomly given a new character and then deny use of it. But for the time being, there was little that could be done. And I viewed the last TV screen. No animation. Ew. No music. Ew. Dead. Every instinct I had was telling me to stop playing, to just turn Throw the game off. Throw a brick at your TV and never and fucking come back. At this point. To warn me as to just how horrible this last world was. But then every stretch of the way, I was compelled to give up. I couldn't do that now. Not on the last world. Besides, after taunting me with the memories of Melissa, I felt the game owed me some answers. I noticed that the first level was a red temple, so at least I would be familiar with the level graphics. If nothing else, I went in with Godzilla, the monster I was most familiar with. Ew, the Godzilla had been shrunk. The level and score meters had vanished, and the blue temple statue faces were back. Dude, it wasn't getting me before, but now it's getting me. Temple also. Strange, haunting vocalizations. I tried to get my spirits up by thinking, well, if this level is like the Blue Temple, then that might mean there are no enemies to deal with. How wrong I was. After a short walk, all the statue's eyes started glowing, and a pack of the beasts Ew. from Shadow Labyrinth came charging into me. Since they were coming from the right of the screen, I had to fight my way through them. This battle greatly tested my reflexes, but thanks to my speed, I plowed through the beasts. They gave off health power-ups after dying, which helped recover the damage they had given me. <laughs> However, as I continued through the hallway, the statue's well, the fucking eyes Jack again. Black throwing a peach, but it's just a brick way. instead. It seemed to be the same number of them, but I was less prepared this time, and I took more damage. I had gone through four of these waves until I reached the end of the hall, where I heat beamed the last of the monsters over the edge into an abyss. At first, it seemed I had reached a dead end. This is getting pretty effective, yeah. But after eyes stopped glowing, a brick path slowly appeared before me. I followed the path, which kept me moving towards the right until it stopped at a wall, where I was moved vertically by jumping up ledges. Along the way, I encountered new creatures and some sort of strange shrine, which had a statue of the Hell Beast and some other creature I don't recognize. Oh, dude, the little fucking skinny things freak me out. As I, don't I went like them. through, the path took a downward direction. I had to carefully aim my jumps to avoid the enemies, which were plentiful in this part of the stage. They didn't have many attacks, but they could easily shove you over the edge of the platform. At the end of this tunnel, there were a few small platforming above nothingness. I landed on one towards the left of the screen, and then something came down from above. It looked like the blue angel from the graveyard, except now it was red and had a skull face. Any of the pleasant feelings I had from the blue angel were not present with this red one as it hovered around. Its eye stock had started glowing, just like the statues summoning monsters to attack me. Surely this was not the same benevolent being I encountered before. This must have been some kind of imposter. The battle was nerve -wracking. Imposter among us? I started us? off with nearly half my health and had to deal with multiple opponents, as well as the threat of gravity. They to are like Necromorphs. worse, as the Red Angel took damage, some of the panels fell off until only three remained. But my luck had not run out yet. Just when I thought it was over, I struck the Red Angel one more time, and it turned out that one last hit was all it could take. Just as the Red Angel completely disintegrated, the game instantly went back to the Zenith board. I moved Mothra over to the nearest stage from the Red Temple, which seemed to be a garbled mess of letters spelling KILL 
and began playing. As suspected, all the level graphics were made of jumbled oh, yeah. letters, and Mothra, just like Godzilla, was shrunk to half size. I began to suspect that all the Zenith levels would be like this. The background music was terrible, like if someone put all the sounds an NES was capable of making into a blender and then piecing them back together into a song. I had to turn the volume down because of it. Playing as Mothra made avoiding the enemies easier, but they were nonetheless determined to get at me. The first enemies I saw were headless Gigans, and later on they were hybrid monsters pieced together from previous bosses, like the bilanti headed thing seen here. Five minutes had gone by as if I didn't see anything new, and the level shifted into another segment. The music changed from the loud and annoying beeps into something far more ambient and menacing. The level graphics also changed, now looking a blood-drenched junkyard. The way everything in this level was red made it sickening to look at. The enemies multiplied in number, never ceasing. Did you know what all, like the red reminds me of? And became harder. The and fucking harder um, to avoid. that four chan face. At the face. end of the level, the situation reached a climax. Yeah. As the like I think it's like I think that's what freaks me out is like the like the contrast between the dark and the red. So that's the same with the um, the shock, like the victim the one face from that Mario rom hack. Constantly it's like the contrast of red on black. Cluster that formed its heads. <laughs> if you attacked anywhere else, it would regenerate the damage. Even with that knowledge, this was an extremely difficult fight. It's like, it's like a weird, like, extreme version of attacks, something that's fleshy. Not like, it feels like it would be fleshy, it's but like, if you were to, like, if you were to touch it, it would arms, hurt. Covered with gigant saws and blades. Yeah. If they touched, it would instantly drain health. When it was over, the remaining monsters collapsed into a heap. Then they and the ground below them started to disintegrate and sink towards the bottom of the screen. When I came back to the board, I thought to myself, so far the game has been putting the easiest levels first. If that's the case, how bad will the rest of Zenith be? With two levels down and three to go, my monsters and I had taken our foothold in the world of nightmares that was Zenith. Deciding what actions to take next was more tense and difficult than ever before. But ultimately, I had no way of knowing what the next level would be like, or how well my monsters would be prepared for them, so my only option was to guess. I tried to interpret what the icons of the next levels ahead of me were. The last level before the boss battles was obviously representing some kind of volcanic area with lava and open flames. The middle icon I still don't get, except that it looked fleshy and vaguely like an organ of some kind, oddly oversized as well. The one I was nearest to and about to enter next looked like thorny vines covering a puddle of blood. The Terraria I Corruption. Guess this would be a level with blood rivers like the chase level of dementia. As such, I went with Angiris, because due to his rolling move, he would have the fastest speed while submerged. The level which I call Blood Lake looked like I expected. Rivers of blood accompanied by thorn-covered vines, which were scattered along the sides of the ground. The music was rather faint, but I could hear a distinct drum beat and a few other instruments. A lot of echoes, and sometimes it sounded like someone was hitting a drum underwater. I was disappointed to see that Angiris was shrunk just as Godzilla and Mothra had been. Apparently, all the Zenith levels would be like this. I felt less secure with my giant monsters no longer so giant. I walked along without interruption for only a minute until my path reached a dead end. There was a massive gap between the ground I was walking on and the ground to the right of the screen. I would have swam across it and continued walking to the right, but due to the huge mass of brambles in the way, there was nowhere to go. Two creatures with gliding membranes on their arms and lamprey-like mouths were perched on outstretched vines and screeching at me, much like a crow does to an invader of its territory. Another unnerving display of possibly sentience by the creatures of this game, if it's even accurate to refer to them as being of the game, that is. 
I descended into the blood, slowly sinking to the floor. Aquatic enemies were everywhere, and they were hard to avoid. Well, ew, the little brain thing. Black shark in particular was very aggressive and hard to deal with, but thankfully I only encountered one. As the scene became more and more crowded, I swam up to the surface to find that it was littered with floating corpses. Creepy, but at least they're not a threat. Or so I thought. Until they all sprang to life and leapt on me. They were trying to pull me under, and they were draining my health as they did it. They all attacked as a group, and when I got one off me, another would jump on me from behind. I had to curl up into a ball and roll for them to loosen their grip, and when they did, I quickly retreated. It wasn't long before I reached another land path. A note regarding the brambles. You can stand on them, but it causes pain. You can also destroy some of the vines, but only the thinner ones. I had to destroy multiple vines as well, as dealing with more enemies. Then, I was interrupted by a screen. This screen was only up for about 30 seconds. Then, when it went back to the level, I was facing another Whoa. enemy. And a pregnant humanoid creature being hung from the top right of the screen by a spine or some sort of umbilical cord. Instantly, the creature's belly was split open from the inside. It's a clown! And as the lower part of its body was ripped apart and fell into the river below, the Blood Lake's boss was revealed. It came flying towards me, making a shrill, hacking scream. I was forced to move back. The bat was a highly mobile boss, fast and difficult to hit. As I moved back along the ground, the monster opened its mouth <laughs> Welcome and shot to out the a barrage of needles. I'm never going I to jumped destroy. over them and managed to give it a blow to the head, and it started flying out of my reach. Also, uh, Wolfram, As looking the bat was flying, beings. it shot a stream of fire from its eye sockets and started trying to hit me with the flames. I rolled along the ground, which drained my power, but put us. Oh my fucking speed. god, that looks sick as hell. This cycle repeated for about three times until the monster was <laughs> defeated. Dude, I love the fucking with dimmering effect. With most of my health drained, I went back to the edge of the level, and the <laughs> large bramble vine blocking the exit was now gone. Now only two levels left to go. Who to send Dude, y'all in fucking chat right now better go to this other fucking stream when it happens. Mothra and Gears have all completed one level, leaving Solomon. And also the mysterious fifth monster. I tried accessing it again, but with no luck. I chose to use Godzilla again for the next level, and Solomon for the final one. The second to last level is what I refer to as the organic level, which was the most visually unpleasant of them all. Ew. Right from the start, I could see that the graphics were f
level to go. I didn't hesitate. I selected Solomon and entered. Perhaps a little too fast. This last level was definitely the peak of disconnection between what the NES was graphically capable of and what this game could create. Yeah, we've gone from like the, the music also caught my attention. fucking it Godzilla fucking style to like Doom. More than once, the horrible screeching from when the hell beast appeared in the graveyard. As soon as I started, there was already an enemy prepared to attack, a centaur wielding a whip, and it wasn't alone. We're in like when actual I started fucking fighting, hell. Several more centaurs appeared, coming from both sides of the screen at the same time. It was too much to handle. Solomon's flight saved me from taking too much damage at the start of the level. The centaurs followed after, but seemed to be unable to jump. After escaping the centaurs, I noticed gaps in the ground while trying to avoid the jumping sword mouthed enemies in mid. -flight. BFG Division starts playing. The surface of the lava, and a creature emerged and tried to grab me. It didn't succeed, but I was startled. Careful maneuvering would be needed to avoid instant death here. As new enemies appeared, the level soon became very difficult. A lot of the trouble came from stocky red demons that stood on top of tall, narrow mountains and spewed fire. I got by them by waiting till their back was turned and hitting them with a flying kick, which made them fall into the lava. It was at this time I noticed that I wasn't gaining any health from killing enemies. Not all the ground was stable. At one point, the ground was reduced to small chunks that slowly drifted towards the right. Some of them would sink into the lava upon landing on them. And then there was no way to tell which one would sink and which would not. Being so close to the lava added the threat of the lava creatures, and this was very frustrating. I was also feeling very hot, which made concentrating hard. <laughs> if you've ever had a heat rash, uh, he it felt similar to that. I had periodically <laughs> Hang up that computer call. Of it. This was almost Hang up that computer call. And not my I'm over here kissing my heart. But I kept now. pushing the I'm thought out of my romantic. head. I didn't want to think about it. At the end of the stage, Dude, I remember when the I fucking FNAF movie boss, was coming out and somebody fucking the edited the that with fucking Bonnie and the guy in the fucking closet. An ungodly howling roar. Oh my god. When it walked onto the land, I saw how gigantic it was. Several the times the size of Solomon. I was about <laughs> they to became fly quirky. Up and they got quirky at night. Its mouth and let out a huge blast of fire. I had to dodge the flames and then get close enough to the boss to fire a heat beam at its face, causing it to stumble backwards. If it didn't stumble backwards, it would have kept moving left until it forced Solomon into the lava, as there was no more ground within reach. The beast had to wait between uses of its fire breath, as it seemed to cost a great deal of energy. I used this time to attack, but fire wasn't its only weapon, and I had to be wary of the monster swatting at me with its clawed hands. As its health decreased, it moved faster, and the battle felt like a tug of war between the two monsters over this bridge of land. After about 40 hits, it was defeated, tumbling backwards into the lava from whence it came. And then, the final stage had been completed. At last, it was down to two bosses and a final encounter with the Hell Beast. For some reason, I thought Ghidorah would be easier to beat, so I confronted him first. The classic Ghidorah battle music from the original game started up as I was faced against the new King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah was as powerful and unrelenting as ever. He instantly lashed out with gravity beams, which were more damaging than Godzilla's heat beam. It became a struggle of constant- oh, Hi Ben, what are we Ghidorah watching? We're watching NES Godzilla. To keep him from using the attack. But Ghidorah soon saw through my tactic and started using physical attacks as well. He would strike with each of his necks, knocking me backward and making it impossible to get close enough to punch him. But I had an idea to wait for him to lunge with one of his heads and immediately blast it with the heat beam. It worked, and to my surprise, the heat beam actually obliterated Ghidorah's middle head. 
but it was only a few seconds before Reduce I realized what this would lead to. And sure enough, King Ghidorah used the power of the glitch to transform into Mecha King Ghidorah. But what really shocked me was the sudden change of music. I've heard it before, but it wasn't from the original NES game. It was from the game Super Godzilla during the Mecha King Ghidorah fight. Mecha King Ghidorah's first attack was its most deadly, the Machine Hand. Very similar to Gigant's saw, it immobilizes the monster and rapidly drains the health bar. Fortunately, before King Ghidorah could do a lot of damage, the timer ran out. I would need to defeat Mecha King Ghidorah quickly to prevent him from using the Machine Hand, so I sent Solomon to fight him. The two monsters were evenly matched in strength, but Solomon was faster and by slashing and heat-beaming without pause, the cyborg monster soon met its end. With Ghidorah defeated, I was returned to the board. I now outnumbered the enemy by four monsters to one, and victory seemed to be soon at hand. The base icon had changed to a blood-red color. I could feel hatred emanating from it. I started the fight against Destroya with Anguirus. It is Melissa, and the dude. I swear to fucking God. When the fight began, Destroya was in microscopic form. After one hit, it changed into the Juvenile, which had few attacks and was also dealt with easily. The fight became serious once Destroya entered the aggregate form, gaining the use of large arms and the micro-oxygen beam. Anguirus's role, which had been very useful up until now, was rendered useless by Destroya constantly attacking me with his large arms when I tried to use it. For this part of the fight, I had to rely on brute strength. Just before the time ran out, Destroya had changed into his flying form, which Anguirus was ill-suited to fight against. Going back in, I fought against the flying form with Mothra, which seemed fitting. Mothra was weaker than Anguirus, but was much better equipped to dodge and counter Flying Destroyer's attacks, so the fight was in my favor. However, the Mecha Ghidorah fight music started playing, and Destroyer changed into his final form sooner than expected, which drastically turned the tables. Mothra's attacks were doing very little to Destroyer, and I had to move furiously to avoid damage while waiting for the timer to run out. Even though it would be nearly impossible to beat Destroyer with Mothra, I still had three other monsters. Final Form Destroyer was very resistant to taking damage, and the heavily armored foe would not be defeated without a long fight. In the last part of the fight, I wasn't using much strategy, just attacking as brutally and as fast as I could. Raging between Godzilla's fire breath and Gears' brute strength, and Solomon whenever I could. On its last bar of health, Destroya tried one last counterattack, a beam of energy from its chest. I didn't know how powerful it would have been, because just before it could fire, I punched Destroya in the chest cavity, destroying him. And then that was it. The last kaiju boss was gone. All right, can we, uh, real quick? I had briefly mm -hmm. forgotten that there was still before this, uh, this final part of the story. Can I go to the bathroom real quick? Yeah. All right, I'll be right back. Sorry to leave you all on a cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on Dragon Ball Z. How are we all doing in chat? This fucking, this fucking creeped up on me. Like, I wasn't expecting fucking much. Like, I knew it was, like, influential. I knew it was, like, really fucking good. But I wasn't expecting fucking this much of a creep. <laughs> this much of a fucking creep up. This fucking got me good. Like, the fucking fleshy area? Ew. I fucking hate fleshy things. Kind of reminds me- Like, there's some parts of the fucking thing that remind me a lot of the, um... Oh, what is it? From Halo? The Flood? I fucking hate the flood. I remember me when my sister used to live in the same house with us. We used to play Halo all the time. And we used to fucking hate the flood. Like, I think we had we had Halo 3, 4, and Reach. And I think we got 5 when it came out. Found out that it wasn't multiplayer and never played it. But we always fucking hated the flood. It was... <laughs> yeah. 
It was like, was it like the little, like this little spore things that like come out of their head? I fucking hate those. Yeah. Got to work on some drawings. That's good. Working on radar stuff. I'm still thinking of Skylar White memes. My name is Melissa Red, yo. I'm going to fucking kill you in Godzilla, yo. Uh huh. Stop trying to beat the game. I swear to God, if it doesn't fucking reveal that, like, Melissa is one of these fucking things. That is absolutely how it's gonna go. It's gonna be, like, the fucking spirit of Melissa. I mean, Melissa just sounds, like, malicious. If anyone, if anyone in chat's name is fucking Melissa, I'm sorry, you got a very unfortunate name. Your name sounds, like, malicious. Well, I can't say shit before my parents decided on my actual name. They were possibly gonna name me Violet, which sounds like fucking violence. <laughs> Don't fucking DM me, Skylar White memes. I need to find the one that my fucking friend sent me. <laughs> it's like, my name is Skylar White, yo. Ding. My husband is Walter White, yo. Ding. I fucking love him. What's the one with like the it's like the girl where she's doing it, but every time it does like the fucking vine boom, she like does like the fucking Chad face. I fucking love that one. <laughs> Friend was also almost made into violence. <laughs> just violence itself, not even just an act of violence, just like an orb, a orb of violence. Blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull friend. I need to fucking look at more Warhammer stuff. It's been a fucking while since I've looked into Warhammer. It's been a long fucking time. I think, oh, this is fucking something that I want to buy again. Because I had it on the Xbox, but I don't have it here. I want to rebuy one of the Vermintide games. Because I think Vermintide and the Skaven, like specifically the Skaven, has to be my favorite parts of Warhammer. <laughs> Somebody animated it. <laughs> oh! Oh, did I fucking- I forget that we have that. The fucking alert box. I completely fucking forget about it all the time. Lobotomy corp? You mean just like, like lobotomy corp? I mean, after this, I'm probably gonna end off stream, because we've been streaming for quite a while now. But, oh, that's another fucking thing that I need to look into, Lobotomy Corp. Been told that it's very similar to SCP, and I've been, like, I've mentioned it quite a bit. Especially in the Midnight Horrors and Terrors of Nowhere fucking videos. If you want a good book, I recommend Lords of Silence. I can look into that. <laughs> the alert box was fucking Skylar Weissen. Yeah. huh God. I think the only Warhammer games I've ever played is Vermintide and it was like the fucking the top down one. I can't remember what the name of it was. It was some kind of fucking tactical game. Don't start simping for your assistant. Why? <laughs> Who is our assistant? I will get to decide that fact. Dawn of War? It might be. Dude, that fucking visual of the like, of red, this fucking thing, freaks me out. I d it feels like it's staring into my fucking soul and I hate it. It's the way it's like it's looking at the screen, it's so tiny you can barely make out the figures. Dude, that's something that fucks me up. When you can like... Either, like, having a creepy face, not being able to see the face, or only just barely, vaguely being able to make out the features of something. That's the fucking part that gets me. If I can only just vaguely make out what something is. I hate it. Ah. Oh yeah, I'll be updating the stream title once it's over.
I might also edit the thumbnail a bit. <laughs> Red is so cute. Red looks like that fucked up fucking fetus baby from Resident Evil Village. You, <laughs> you cannot say that thing looks fucking cute. That thing looks like it's about to fucking, like, take away all of my guns and then scare the shit out of me in, like, the scary section of a fucking game. <laughs> Bubbly no, they do not! One looks like a fucking blob. They predicted fetus from Ari. I need to talk about- dude. <laughs> All of the fucking um, Resident Evil games went on sale, and on that exact same day I gained the entire fucking Resident Evil franchise in my Steam library. <laughs> they were all like- they went from whatever price they normally are to like three pound, four pound, and I was like, well, better time than any, and fucking bought the entire fucking franchise. So I need to make a video about one of them at some point. I'm thinking I'll probably end up doing one about 2, because 2 was the first ever Resident Evil game that I ever played. And I feel like it has some of, like, the very good themes I love with Resident Evil. Like, especially, like, being confined in just the fucking police, like, station, and, like, having things like the fucking liquors about, and then all of a sudden it's like you go down and it's like, oh, there's an entire fucking, like, facility under this fucking city. Either that or I'd fucking, um, depending on copyright laws, because there's like, I want to talk about movies, I want to talk about shows at some point if I can, and specifically the Resident Evil movies have been on my mind, and Courage the Cowardly Dog. Because like, dude, if there's one scene that actually genuinely freaks me out and I still think about in real life, like, on like a regular basis, it's I can no longer go inside of an elevator without thinking of that starting sequence from the first Resident Evil movie. Like, when there's, like, the, the one girl gets, like, a fucking head cut off, and then they open up the fucking doors, and there's all fucking zombies on the inside. I can't go into an elevator anymore without thinking of that scene. Also, welcome back. I see. It's <laughs> talking about Resident Evil. Y'all, I, um... I'm, like... Uh... I fucking... My dad... Just went through some surgery so i'm i'm a little worried about him thankfully I, during our little stream break i was able to check up on him and it seems like the guy is doing pretty okay which makes yeah. me happy that's good to hear yeah i think they have him on pain meds so he should be good for a little while mm. i'm just worried for when the for when those wear off because i can't imagine the the type of pain that he's going to be in Hmm. But let's see. For now, I'm just glad like. that he's holding up. Yeah. Also, he gave me uh, something I've never tried before. He gave me a banana bread flavored pop tart. Banana. Yeah, I love banana fucking flavored things. Banana is so nice. Banana is fucking oh underrated God, as hell. Me. Dude, people are always like mm -hmm. strawberry milk, chocolate milk. Have banana milk. Try banana milk. It's nice as hell. Banana milk is simply better. Banana milk is fucking goaded. Actually, the icon again actual and actual. Like a ton of bricks, and I froze for a few minutes. I had come so far to get to this point, but I was terrified. Gonna go sleep. Good night, I really did not want to know what the last encounter was going to be like. Before I could let myself think about it any longer, I moved Godzilla over. And banana mid apple stage. peak. Apple is peak. You're here now. Apple is one this of my favorite flavors, but banana Just mid. One last thing, and then it's all over. Is what I said to myself. And when you have banana milk. Changed, yeah, it's fucking was... everywhere. It's like Nothing. the free major milk flavors: Just fucking Godzilla strawberry, and chocolate, and banana. Screen. I walked back and forth, fired a heat. Sadly, it's not as common in the U.S. No, I'm never moving. I heard something. The faint sound. It's actually really uncommon to find unless you're at an Asian market. Dude, I'm staying here. Ew! Stop looking at me with them big old eyes. 
the fight we've been waiting for. Yeah! Take his ass! Dude, you're fucking- you're building up for some loud ass noise, I already know it. Stop this. Okay then. Oh. Dear. God. That was my first thought on realizing I would have to fight Red, the creature that had tormented me through nearly the entire game. How would I be able to fight something that can kill me with one touch? It seemed totally impossible. Thankfully, Red was no longer able to deliver one-hit kills, but despite that, this was still the most difficult battle I've ever faced, in this game or otherwise. If I had any real comprehension of what I was getting into before I started the fight, I would never have done it. I very soon learned what a horrible mistake I had made. Red reached out and clawed at Godzilla, and when those claws cut through him, I felt it. I know that it's common for people to cringe up when the video game character gets hit or loses a life, but this was not that. This was genuine physical pain. When Dude, me when I'm playing VR chat and I get phantom sense. Game, I hadn't suffered any actual injuries, but it felt just like my shoulder had been clawed into. I had seen and experienced many unpleasant things at this point, but the game causing me real pain was where I drew the line. Yes, I would be disappointed that I wouldn't get to see the ending, but the risk was no longer worth it. I was about to get up to take one last screenshot and turn off the NES, when I realized something. I couldn't get up. I was paralyzed to my seat. The only muscle I could move were my Frick. fingers and thumbs. And as the terror set in, a new message appeared on the screen. <laughs> no, uh -uh. I started to scream but only a weak choking sound was coming out. I desperately tried to get my body to move, but it did nothing. I was looking in every direction, and then I looked over at the computer. Somehow the computer was taking screenshots of the game on its own when I began the fight. I still don't know how or why. He like take a picture so it lasts longer. <laughs> Since Red could hear what I was saying, I tried begging for him to let me go. From here, things started to get hazy, as I was under extreme stress at the time. But from what I can remember, I said this. I'm sorry! I'm sorry I insulted you! I didn't mean it! I didn't know things would get this serious! Please just let me go! Bro, I think everything I was just, fucking I was goofing. Don't tell anyone or turn the game on ever again, please! And Red replied by saying this. <laughs> Damn! That statement could not be any more clear. If I couldn't kill Red, then he would kill me. Like an idiot, I had played around with something I didn't He's understand. He's gonna kill her! And now it and then, they're me gonna life. kill me! I stopped ah. struggling to move and accepted the reality of the situation. There was only one way to get out of this alive. I had to beat that motherfucker up. We deserve. It all went by so fast that if it weren't for the screenshots, I might not have remembered any of this. Just like in the chase levels, Red moved at horrifyingly fast speed. There was barely enough time to process a thought. And thus, there was no time to form a strategy. I had to rely solely on my wits and reflexes. To make things worse, there was no way to predict what kind of attacks Red might use, so I constantly had to be on the offensive and defensive. I felt every hit that Godzilla took. They oh, all with that sprite, I can definitely see like the I fucking like so Geiger inspiration. Damage, but every attack that I dodged left me vulnerable. Like with a little fucking like swivel around. The pain would only get worse. Yeah. After he jumped over me, Red eyes started to glow. I moved as far back as I could and ducked. 
but there was no dodging this one. When this hit me, Yowchies. I really did scream. I screamed so loud that someone else in the apartment should have heard me, but they didn't. Just looking at the image hurts me, making me remember the incinerating burn. I paused the game because it hurt so bad, but Red unpaused the game to attack me again, which made me furious. I immediately counterattacked with a heat beam again and again until the power meter was totally diminished. I wanted Red to hurt like I did. Just before the timer ran out, Red transformed into his swimming form. I didn't think the timer would still be affecting a battle like this. I'm thankful for it, because it gave me a few minutes to collect my thoughts and decide what to do next. I chose to fight Red's next two forms with the monsters I had encountered them with, so Angiris was next. <laughs> Dodge the lights on fire. Idea, but it's what I did. I jumped up and heat beamed Red in the face, and he moved off screen when I couldn't reach him. Then a wave of large mines started to fall from above. I felt this was unfair, so I shouted. If you're going to cheat, then why you even let me use the controller? And then he came at me, rushing from the top left of the screen downwards. Damn it! Now I wouldn't even be able to see where his next attack was coming from. Red continued to strike from random angles. I constantly moved to swerve around him. Another 40 seconds went by, and Angiris was nearly gone. But together, we had forced Red into his flying form. So it was Mothra's next turn. Deciding to fight Red with Mothra was a terrible idea. Mothra was instantly overwhelmed by Red, and the life meter was devastated in a mere 15 seconds. He just keeps ripping on Mothra, goddamn. down to two bars, Red did something I didn't see coming. He reached out, grabbed Mothra, and ate her. Literally After the fetus from Ari. Devoured, I felt an agonizing pain, like being crushed to death. Mothra had been killed from my stupidity, and I would share the pain. It was a short transition from the battle to the board, but it felt like an hour. The pain, combined with being unable to move, was driving me insane. I wanted so badly for this to end. I never wanted anything so much, but I still had hope. There was only one monster left that could be brought to full health by engaging Red in battle. Solomon. If any of them had a chance to save my life now, it would be him. Solomon apparently had some history with Red, as when the fight started, this dialogue happened. Drama. Red took me by surprise again by immediately burning me with Solomon's his demonic is so fire cool this. a second time. It reminds me of something, hurt, but I can't think of what it is. My advantage, since Solomon started at full life, he Solomon, still had my some actual spare, goat. But now Red had used up all his energy and could not use his ultimate weapon any longer. Now he would die. As he drew close to the end of his life bar, Red turned his he whole looks like body a to wrinkly face little screen, worm. He's like, eh, like that's, that's what he looks like. He sounds like attempt to crush Solomon. When that failed to work, he tried to devour Solomon like he had Mothra, but he wouldn't be eating my monster this time. I struck Red with one final blast of Solomon's heat beam. Yeah! And then he slunk to the ground, burning and withering from the heat beam. I thought I had won, but something was wrong. Red wasn't sinking to the bottom, and I still couldn't move. Red was still alive. He's still alive. He's still alive. After his seeming defeat okay. of Solomon, Red had reconstructed his body into his gigantic final form transporting us to a blazing inferno in the process. 
Dude, it's like, you know, like you're fucking, um... You're playing with someone in fucking, like, uh... Fucking daycare, and you're like, no, no, I'm actually, I'm invisible, you can't hit me. Yeah, it's like red is like. Faced against Red's insane amount of health, my own demise was imminent. Solomon was my strongest monster, but not even he stood a chance. It was like trying to fight a mountain. Within seconds, Solomon was overpowered and dropped to the floor when Red crushed him to death underneath his foot. The sadistic demon took his time as he snapped Solomon's vertebrae and ribs like dry, brittle twigs. Ellie. I could tell he was enjoying our pain. <laughs> this is hopeless. I'm a dead man. I had no choice but to send another monster to his death. We were all going to die. I only hoped they would forgive me. After decreasing Red's health by a minuscule amount, Angiris was also obliterated. Red unleashed a hail of blazing hot needles to its face. Ow. He collapsed. Another moment of Poor Angiris. agony. Then nothing Poor protagonist, he's having to endure all of the pain of all of these monsters getting like breathing. Uh, I asked Red Pasco? how he knew my name, <laughs> and then he said it. No, not Melissa. For years, she was being tortured by something nobody understood. And now I knew what it was. She played Godzilla. Now I understood why I was mocked about Melissa's death. And how the game knew about it. Because he knew about it. Because he was the one responsible. And this time... You're just fucking evil. Me. I was Dude. taken back to the board to send Godzilla to his final stand. Barely anything was left of the board. What a great Just fucking Godzilla antagonist. And Red's icon. Like, right. genuinely. Monster. Like, he's like a genuinely, like, evil antagonist. Like, there's nothing redeemable about, about him. It. He is just like a fucking, monster. I tried like, yet again monster. to select it. I cursed. I begged. I screamed at it to do something. Anything to help me. To no avail. There was only one thing to do. This is over. Much like the previous monsters, Godzilla stood no chance. After releasing a wave of fiery flames from his hands, Godzilla's health was drained, and he too, like Mothra, was devoured by Red. He's pogging. I knew Godzilla didn't stand any more of a chance than the rest did, but maybe. Maybe now that all the other monsters were gone, the fifth monster might finally awaken. I managed to get the creature's icon selected, and I pressed the A button as fast as I could. The icon started to shake, as if it were trying desperately to move. It was then that Red decided he was done playing fair, and before I could activate the monster, he went for the killing blow, paralyzing my heart. My hands started to become numb and unfeeling, but even as my vision was fading, I still tried to press the A button. Red surely was breaking one of the rules, but he must have thought that if he could kill me quickly then it would be too late for any consequences to matter. He would have won. He was wrong. Red's power was being challenged by an outside force. You took the peanut. Him from killing me. And when I regained my vision, I saw a familiar sight. Pepsi Man. Who are you? You already know me. I fucking called it. What? How is that possible? I. Red told me that he killed you. It's true. 
Even after death, he tortures me. If you can't stop him, he'll do the same to you. But how will I be able to stop him now? I can't fight Red, but there is one who can. I will release him from Red's grasp. Don't give up. I love you. Her words stirred something inside of me. I wasn't going angle. to die like this, and I had more to fight for than just my own life. I had to fight to save Melissa and the world she inhabits. With her help, the fifth monster was finally unleashed. It was time to end this once and for all. We would take this damn hell spawn out of existence. <laughs> Acacius was by far the strongest playable monster in the game. He had to be if we had a chance of surviving. This drops his a fucking punch nuclear involved bomb. turning his hands into blades, which caused tremendous damage. He also had the ability to fire lasers from his face, as well as star-like projectiles from his hands. And even the ability to fly, much like Solomon. Instead, he could levitate in the air. Red had more than enough life to spare. In the end, this would come down to pure skill. And finally, with one final strike, Red was eerie. destroyed. It's fucking eerie gooey. He's actually fucking wavering, dude. <laughs> he looks so annoyed, like, god fucking damn it. Oh, that corruption we looks had weird. Jumped. Melissa's death had been avenged, and I felt overwhelming happiness. Until I remembered all the death and pain that led up to this point. All the other monsters who had fought and died. You get the cartridge, you break it in half. I don't care if your dead girlfriend's in there. To conclude. My final message: change the world. Goodbye. <laughs> Tears of joy streamed down my face, and I broke out. Your face crying. looks like such a fucking I shit cried harder than I had in several years. <laughs> Maybe in my whole yeah. life, all I had been through, all I had discovered, and now the game was coming to an end. But before she and the others left, Melissa had something to tell me. You have saved us. We are forever grateful. We'll be together again someday. Now snap that fucking cartridge. <laughs> Dude, what a great fucking story. Holy shit. Does he have any more to say or is that the end? He does, but I do think the ep epilogue kind of cheapens the ending a little bit. So mm -hmm. it's your decision on whether or not you'd like to hear it. I want to leave it like that. I want to leave it like that. This seems like I a think nice that's ending. the perfect ending for the story. It's a nice ending. <laughs> what does he do? Is he just like, and then Melissa came out of the cartridge and she was real again. And we um, all lived happily ever after. It, that, the epilogue chapter is about like him kind of deciding to do like what to do with the cartridge and he can't ever play it again but he can't bring himself to break it so he lists it on fucking ebay what the fuck <laughs> he oh lists his god. dead girlfriend on ebay bro <laughs> that's fucked up oh my god dude just fucking snap it burn it put it in a ditch somewhere that's what i do but oh my god that was i so would not good. i the only reason I wouldn't burn it is because A, Red is gone from there, but B, like, there's a thriving ecosystem. Like, that's an entire world in there of actually sentient life. 
See, but if I was you and I became a fucking spirit and I got trapped inside of a fucking Godzilla game, I'd be fucking pissed. <laughs> Especially for the fucking NES. <laughs> I'd be like, I don't fucking get out of here. <laughs> Let me go. Especially since Melissa can't even like move properly. She has one sprite and she's just yeah. locked, like stiff, stiffly standing. <laughs> She wants to sleep, she just kind of rotates her sprite to the side. <laughs> Flip 90 degrees. But dude, that was fucking amazing. Red as an antagonist is so fucking good, dude. I would dare say that, like, if we're talking about video game creepypastas and, like, just popular creepypastas in general, I'm sorry, but Red is the best antagonist. Like, oh, dude, definitely. bar none. I think... <laughs> The only ones that I can remember off the top of my head are things like the fucking Mario ROM hack, Sonic.exe, and like fucking, um, Ben Drowned, and dude, yeah, <laughs> yeah fucking way better than those. Like, yeah, there were and poor ben parts Drowned, of it. Ben Drowned is cool. Yeah, Ben, ben Drowned, Drowned is cool, good. don't get me wrong, but like, Red is a far more fierce antagonist. It's like, there are parts of it where you're kind of like, okay, like, I see you're going just for a little bit of, like, shock factor, but, like, a large majority of it was really fucking good, and it definitely fucking creeped up on me at the end. You'd like being stuck you in shit right like, no, I would that, not. You also gotta realize that Godzilla NES was posted in 2011 and started development in, like, 2009. Oh my god. So the cheese oh, been three is, years uh, old well warranted yeah <laughs> oh my god dude that is definitely like for like the fucking 2010s holy shit that's fucking good that but i think for now that's gonna be the end of the stream thank you for everyone that showed up thank you lyra for yeah, coming on yeah it was this is really I'm nice i'm glad i got I like to experience this. this with you yeah it was a fucking great to finally watch both this and doai both amazing fucking Hell things yeah. amazingly fucking talented oh my god they were both amazing oh and somebody somebody brought up in chat that there is actually a canon sequel to nes that that um outlines like the person who actually bought the game after it was listed and what the game looks and operates like after uh it uh after red was killed and it's basically an entire new like thriving ecosystem of n like monsters that do not look remotely like anything from godzilla it's just an entirely different world it's like who sold their dead girlfriend on ebay we're gonna take her back <laughs> i didn't sign up for a fucking david Attenborough documentary i want to play godzilla <laughs> But yeah, that's going to be all for me. Thank you for everyone that showed up. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.